Good evening, Kindred and Kind. Welcome to New York Studios Vampire the Masquerade V5 Chicago and Night Chronicle. Last session, our coterie found themselves across the sea from each other still. Alistair Grayson, Kaido Hikishi, and Memphis Piper were en route to LA, of all places. Lady Jessica Lucinda has approved Alistair's lead time to return back home. But before returning home, he's going to receive a reward from none other than Maximilian Strauss. On the other side of the globe in Chicago, Marilyn and Erwin were discovering some new things within Felix's Haven, and they also discovered some new friends. Khalid, the missing Nosferatu primogen, has been dwelling within the Haven, along with some undead companions. So, let's not wait anymore. Let's find out what happens tonight in Chicago by night. And we're back. Uh, let's do something we haven't done in a while. Let's go around the table and introduce my kindred for tonight, starting on this side. Alistair Grayson. Clan Venture. Um, Memphis Piper, Clan Torador. Marilyn Alcott, Clan Malkavian. Uh, Dr. Erwin Rubeth, Clan Tremere. I always start with And my name is Elijah Israel, or by my it's Twitch handle, Noy Boy. I'll be your storyteller for this evening. I was building drama. <laughs> have we not done that in a while? It's been a while. Yeah, Seriously, no, been... we didn't the past few times? Mm -hmm. So the past two times, no. Where have you uh, been? I don't know. Another planet. Yeah. Huh. Not pay attention like me. Yeah, you're... Beacon. You're shining beacon to us all. Mm -hmm. So, with introductions out of the way and a recap out of the way, let's go ahead and get right into the game. We rejoin Marilyn Alcott and Dr. Ruth within Felix's Haven. Erwin, as you come to and Kapula's voice dissipates, uh, you find yourself right next to Marilyn again. Um, look at my hand, admire my, my tattoo. If you look back at your hand, it appears that it's turned black again. Oh, what's, what's going on? Um... Why are you looking I, at? Why are you looking at your hand? Just remembered. I uh, I think um, there's something I need to go do. Can I? What are you, what are you doing? What's uh, this? I, uh, hey, uh, you remember when we um, when you helped me with my situation with my uh, with uh, the gargoyle side of me and uh, Dietrich study? Yeah, I remember. Um, do you think you can get those books again? I should be able to. They should still be down there. Why? What? What's going on? Uh, it's the. It's, um, I don't know. What do you mean I, you don't I, know? I, I I felt it change and just now and um and I'm not sure I should be down here at the moment. Oh, you think there's like a book or something that's messing with it, or it's got some magical artifact or something? 
no, um, I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you, uh, Marilyn. Um, I think this has to do with um, all our confrontations with uh, Kapula somehow. <coughs> Why do you think that? Um, because it literally started after we dealt with him. Is uh, Khalid still around, or did he wander off? He wandered off. He left uh, the two of you in the room by yourself. Uh, as you check around the room, it appears that um, your ghostly companion is no longer there either. No, he left. Here said he's left the room. Ah, oh, damn. I was going to see if Philip maybe could help with this. There's got to be something here that... But, uh, I'm just saying, like... Well, wait, we're in the... We're in a good... This is a good opportunity for us, though, then, because he was just saying that Felix was dabbling with Capula. Maybe there's some notes here or something we can figure out how to help. Perhaps, but I also feel like through this, um, he might gain knowledge of what we're doing down here. Why? Like, where's all this coming from? I don't. I don't know. Like, I clearly don't r really understand this. I don't. Well, know. Well, you think he's like he can see through your eyes or hear through your ears or I, something? I, I hope not. Then I think we're fine. But maybe just to be safe. Maybe I shouldn't be down here right now. <sighs> there's so. There's just so much here we can go through. I, I, I agree. Um, I mean, I, I want to live down here. It's all right, amazing. All right. I'll tell you what. How about we just go through, grab a few books real quick that we think will be helpful or with something that we need, and we can just grab a few handfuls and be on our way. And I can come back on my own time sometime. Okay. Sure. That, that, that'd be fine. Okay. I'm going to start going through and just looking for any books of, like, interest. Just okay. grabbing a couple, like two or three. Two or three. Okay. So, just anything? Is there a particular t topic that you're after, or? Um. So I want to I'll keep an eye out for more Knights of the Moon stuff for sure. See if he has anything like that down there. Okay. Are and you I, taking the schematics or? Yes, I, I have. Yeah, I put I popped into those. I okay. Stuff them somewhere. Um. Anything like that, and then anything involving Capula also. Okay. If I can find any of his research on that. Trying to find stuff on Kapula. Also, this the Shadowlands stuff too. The Shadowlands. Yeah. Okay. So why don't you go ahead and give me a uh, investigation roll? We'll do intelligence investigation. If you want to search to your own, you can if you like. Uh, sure. It'll be the same roll as intelligence investigation. Uh, I'm not setting a difficulty to this roll. You're just going to tell me the amount of successes you get. Two. Two. Okay. <laughs> this is absolutely bullshit. Okay. So this is what happens. This is so ridiculous. Marilyn, as you begin to go through Felix's belongings and start going through bookshelves and piles of books, uh, start to shift through the dust and the cobwebs. Um, you do eventually find some more information and notes, typically, is what you find. You don't really find any sort of novel um, that was officially published, but uh, you find stuff on Knights of the Moon. Uh, you also find some uh, demonology books. Uh, you pick it up just because maybe there might be an insert about Kapula within there. Uh, other than that, you don't... You can't quite find anything on the Shadowlands. Uh, you find little hand notes here and there marked on pieces of papers um, referring to it, but um, not full documents. All right. <clears throat> and I asked last game too, I think if there was like a desk or anything that might have like a journal or something I want to look, but I don't, I don't know if there was anything like that. If you look specifically for like a journal, like a yeah. handwritten journal. Um, You can give me another investigation roll if you'd like. Two. 
two. Still the same. Um, <laughs> as you still kind of find a bit of the same stuff as you shift through it, you can't find a um, personal journal of sorts. No, nothing similar to what you already have in your possession. Erwin, as you begin panning around the room and looking around, uh, you start looking through uh, the bookcases and swatting away the cobwebs and the dust. Uh, as you come to a bookshelf, you pass by a nearby window, not window, but a mirror that's slanted and laid against the wall. As you walk past <laughs> it, could you please give me wits and awareness? One. One? Okay. As you begin to walk towards this bookshelf uh, you look to your left and you see this mirror that's slanted against the wall, it's very old uh, it's got this gold filigree that's embroiled around it uh, as you look uh, slightly to your left and you begin to see the mirror to fog up and then it recedes it fogs up it recedes it's like this moisture that's Either being breathed onto it or something's onto it. Um, I'll investigate it closer. Okay. So you get in front of it and you uh, notice that the front of it has um, cobwebs that are kind of skewing the view. The dust is heavy and caked on, but. Um, the mirror, uh, or at least parts of the mirror that are um, showing, you see this residual kind of like moisture, fog it up, and then draw back. You swat it away? Yeah. Okay. As you brush the dust away and you swat the cobwebs away, and you look at it, it's like someone's breathing on it. You notice the mirror begins to go black. As you stare deep into it, you see these two red eyes begin to come out of the darkness and approach the mirror from the other side. And you can hear it with inside your head, this low growl. And you watch as the glass begins to vibrate as something's stepping closer towards it. So you look what you looking at there? Oh I <laughs> jump away from the fucking mirror. Okay. As you step away from the mirror, you uh, quickly spin around and you see Philip standing there. Uh, uh, don't ever do that again. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's uh, It looks like you are um, Jesus. looking at your reflection. You do look rather banged up. Um, and, uh, I, is there something, something about this mirror is... Not a typical mirror? Looks fine to me. He walks over to the mirror and you don't see a reflection. Um, the mirror looks completely clear now. What's, what's the fuss going on here with a mirror? What's going on? I, I don't know. I uh, saw that it looks like someone was breathing on the mirror. It was fogging up and then some... Uh, I'm not sure. Something something was on the other side of it. I'm gonna walk up to it. You said it was slanted, like it's leaning against the wall. Slanted, slanted against the wall. I'm gonna like look behind it. You look behind it. Yeah, you don't see anything other than the wire that's used to hang it. I'm gonna like feel like the edges of it. You feel the edges mm -hmm. of it. You feel the the hard uh, gold filigree that's embroiled around it. Other than that, uh, you feel behind it, and you can kind of feel that um, cardboard type material that they keep behind mirrors. Seems like a normal mirror to me. Uh. I don't, I don't know what it was, but uh, there was something definitely in that mirror a minute ago. Okay. So yeah, maybe we should get you home. But hey, Philip, I was looking for you earlier. Ah, uh, yeah. So, see this thing? Uh, <clears throat> that's a hand. No, the thing on the hand. Can you not see that? Oh. This, <clears throat> this thing. Right here. That's a really weird birthmark. You never Shoot, seen anything like that before sure down here? Is. Mm. Nothing. You've never seen anything like that. Oh no. How long have you been down here? I don't know. 
okay. Well, uh, I guess we should get going. What, then. what year is it to you right now? Hmm. Last I checked, it was 1927. Oh, yeah, that's a while, yeah. It's been out here for a while. Yeah, all right. We should get going, Erwin. Let's get you out of here. <clears throat> As you uh, two begin to gather uh, the books and uh, your belongings, uh, you still holding on to that wet suitcase of money. I forgot about that. <laughs> Oh no, I hope it's okay. I'm gonna open it real quick. Okay, as you open it up, it is completely drenched as you uh, mm-hmm. open the briefcase, water spills out onto the ground. You know, it's the majority of the uh, ink is uh, <coughs> dripping off the bills. Oh no. Oh no. Are you alright? No. What's wrong? Look. See several hundred bills that are completely soaked and damaged. Oh, no. They're it's fine. To just hang them up when you get home. Hang them up. Yeah. Where am I gonna hang them up? I don't know. Do you look, have, at, look at this. Maybe clothespins. The ink's coming off. The ink's coming off. I'm closing it. I'll okay. just deal with it later. Todd. Hmm. What? What do you mean that's odd? Um, um, didn't know ink on dollar bills, uh, got ruined. I don't know, I don't know anything about money. Are you trying, you think it's fake? Do you think it's fake money? Maybe it is. Oh, no. All right. Since you begin to gather your things and get ready to leave, uh, you know, as Philip wisps away and disappears, uh, you begin to hear, uh, that familiar sound of chainmail coming up the stairs and uh, wrapping around. <clears throat> Are you two ready to go? Yeah, I'm gonna ask you two while I'm here. Look at that. You see that? You see anything like that down here before? He you know, kind of like walks over and uh, he brings up your, his hand to yours. Uh, his uh, stark white clawed hands uh, grass around and gently pulls it closer towards him. <clears throat> does remind me of Clan Zemitsi. Yeah. <clears throat> you wouldn't happen to be affiliated with said clan. No. You? I... The only one I ever knew that was from that clan, I... I helped kill. It just keeps appearing on us. We got rid of it a little bit ago and it just came back, so... We're trying to figure out what it's about. Hmm. Well, if there was any kindred, I would know that would have any idea what to do about that would be Felix. But unfortunately for us, he is long gone. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, thank you for for all your help, and I hope you don't mind if I stop by again sometime. Of course. Though, I would have to ask the both of you for discretion. They are not aware that I'm down here. Uh, of course, uh... My lips are sealed. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't dream of telling anyone. I have business that I still have to deal with before I make my presence known once again within the city. Uh, two of you be careful. Thank you. Um... Do you want me to bring you back anything? Like a DVD or... You even got a TV down here? I can bring you, like, a new book. Mm. Well, there's plenty of reading down here. Yeah, but I mean, like, one that's fun. A fun book. Coloring book. My nights are busy enough as it is. I've been trying to help the labyrinth recover from some sort of guru attack. Oh, weird. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll uh, get out of your hair or lack of hair or whatever you got going on so let's let's uh let's go let's get out of here i'll be seeing you again soon are you too aware of how to get out of here yeah i was just about to ask you if you knew how i figured we would have to figure a way to climb up a waterfall no there is another way out oh and would it be okay if she used that entrance to come back here or did she have to go right through the thing again 
Or she could use the other entrance. That's good. That's good. Felix, for whatever reason, decided to design the entrance that way. He thought it was hilarious if someone accidentally came down here. And, Ooh. I thought it was a great idea. I, I, 10 out of 10, would do it again. Would you? Yeah, if I would live down here, and I'd take that, that entrance every time. Well, minus that, that wasn't... Hey. Yes. So, when we went down the little waterfall thing out of the boat, and I landed in the water, I was underwater for a little bit. I saw something weird in there. It was like, it was like a, a life-size doll. It was all white. And it had like real human hair, it looked like. And it kept like moving when I looked away. It got closer to me. Mm. There's no doll in that body of water. All right. Maybe I was imagining things. Actually, yeah, I probably was. You didn't see it when I was looking at it, right? I, I didn't see anything. It's probably just my imagination. Well, if you two are done, then I will show you your way out. I think we're done. Kind of turns around and he begins to lead the two of you out of Felix's Haven. Uh, it brings you to an opening into a tunnel and proceeds to lead you into the sewer system. Uh, some trekking in the dark. Uh, eventually, uh, you find yourself uh, looking up a uh, to a manhole cover. Um, he climbs the ladder and pushes it overhead and uh, waits for the two of you to exit. <clears throat> well, this is your way out. I'm gonna start climbing up. Thank you for your help. You're very welcome. Thank you. So, uh, you begin to climb up. Um, as so you come to the street side, you check your surroundings. It appears that you're nearby a police station uh, that was only a couple blocks from the actual park itself. <clears throat> All right. So, I guess that's only one thing we can do, Erwin. We gotta go back to my place. Okay. Come on. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how are you getting there? When I call an Uber. How? <gasps> My phone. How far is Alcott's from where we're at? It's quite a ways. It's a couple Alright, so I'll wait till I see like a traditional taxi Two, and wave yeah, it down. Yeah. Hail taxi. Oh, my he's wet. Maybe we'll take wet money. Hey, money. Oh no. Oh no, Erwin, I think we have a problem. We have to dry out your money right away. All right, here, I'm gonna like pull out if you blow on it. Yeah. Or do you, can you like make a fire or something? I can just like wave it over and hopefully it won't catch on fire. No, I can't do that. Um, oh. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll it's take right. a couple of ones in both hands and just wave them around. Okay. Trying to use air to. As you start shifting ones. through the briefcase. Not ones, a dollar bill, sorry. You file towards the back of the bills and you find some that are within the bundles that are semi moist um, that are yes. usable uh, and you, you get enough to pay for the fare uh, that's usable within the briefcase alright then we're going to wave down a taxi okay. you wave down a taxi Jared pulls up opens the door alright where are you heading uh, I'm going to tell him the address also my money's kind of wet I'm sorry I fell into a fountain uh it all spins the same, that's fine. Perfect. Okay. So uh, he takes off and brings the TV to Alcott Audi. So that's when we're going to change scenes and. I appreciate you drying the money out for me. Oh, no problem. Maybe you can get some fire spells in the future. You guys told me not to go that route. You didn't trust this Irwin. for drying out money. You said you didn't <laughs> trust Irwin with fire for some reason. <laughs> Alistair Grayson and Memphis Piper. Yeah! You find yourself within the port of LA. It is July 14th. It is a Wednesday. It's taking you approximately around about 20 days or so to uh, make it back stateside. So you arrive, uh, you hear the shouting of. Um, you guys docking onto the port. <clears throat> uh, well, let's do the two of you. Give me rouse checks, please. I go up hunger. Okay. Was there food? Like, yes. On board? So I would say uh, you are starting off the night at uh, one hunger. Oh, okay. So um, whatever 
hunger you've gained, uh, it is just one step below that. You have been feeding since you've been uh, using this boat. Cool. Except for when you're chained up. Oh, they didn't rechain me. I wouldn't let them. You notice the captain comes down. All right, um, looks like we're uh, ashore now, and uh, we have uh, transportation uh, sorted out for the three of you. Excellent. Awesome. I have grown quite um, bored of this vessel, so Memphis, if you're all ready, Kaido is... Yeah, um, so Memphis. Yeah. Uh, I figured that you can stay with me while uh, Alistair is taking care of his uh, business with... Oh, gotcha. You want to say and see with me. No, we are going to be with Alistair, but mm-hmm. I mean, next to me. We're not going sightseeing. You, uh, think of this as, uh, waiting in the, um, waiting in the lobby while your dad goes, has a, has a meeting. <laughs> We're in L.A. Correct. The city of love. We have to use think this time. The cold city of angels, but, all right, um. Why would we call it the city of angels? Los Angeles. All right. Anyway, um, the moral of the story is <clears throat> I can't blow this opportunity while I'm here. I've got to see a couple places. Ka- Kaido? Yeah. We'll, we'll get to. Um, I'll have my meeting with, uh, yeah. with, with Strauss. And, uh, I mean, if you want to go with him, that's fine. No, I can hang out with absolutely him. not. Kaido, you can take Memphis. Keep him on a short leash. Ugh. Gotcha. Uh, mm. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. Um, no, it'll be fine. I'm completely... I've got this completely figured out. Also, smile, everybody. I'm going to take a group photo. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't. Uh, stop. No, I just... Just a second. What did, what did you do? All uh, right. What? I was just telling everyone I'm back on the grid. <sighs> Tell you, what do you mean telling who you're back on the grid? Johnny Bronco fans. Who are you communicating at to as Johnny Bronco? <laughs> just give me a moment. <laughs> make sure I get to the reception. Kaido walks up the stairs and onto the deck. Uh, I was in the Prophets of Memphis. We had all those fans. I bet you they're all wondering what I've been up to. Plus, I want any of my peeps in L.A. to know I'm in town. Your phone chimes, Memphis. Ooh! You know, it's uh, asking for the uh, Apple password. Okay. I put it in. It shakes and vibrates and glows red and the lock stays there. That's weird. (laughs) I'm going to try it again. It shakes and it locks and vibrates. Where's Kaido? I don't he he said he had to get cell phone so, signal. I don't know. Why? I think he just locked my phone. He can do that? Apparently. Apples are supposed to be completely unable to be able to do that. So it's kinda weird that he has access to do the impossible. You know, so he comes back down the stairs. <laughs> Kaido, you're a brilliant genius. Whatever you did to his phone, thank you. Oh, of course. I deleted the account and uh, locked you. You out. deleted my account? Yes. What about all my flou- followers? What about my clout? That doesn't exist anymore. Oh my god. I'm gonna have to start from ground zero again. Do you really think I would give you a, as a wireless device with free reign on the internet? Memphis, I shelled that phone the second I got it. You've been using a... Uh, Android operating system for quite some time. That's why it's been sucking. I was I was so confused, but that makes a lot more sense oh now. Oh. I'm so confused. What is happening? Don't worry. My my superior phone was running in superior because it was running a system called Android. All you have to know is Android bad. You're making me very angry right now. Huh. Uh, 
Let's. Baptist, do you want to keep making me angry, or are we going to continue our night? No, we need to continue our night. All right. Wait, who are you meeting with? <clears throat> I have to meet with Maximilian Strauss. He's oh. The regent of Tangemir here in LA. Um, also, kind of curious on how everyone else is doing, and I wonder if Jack's still in town. But, anyways, um, how do we get going? <clears throat> yeah. All right. So, uh, you know, it's the captain that speaks up. So we uh, <clears throat> got transportation out. It's a uh, kid's name is Jacob. He'll be chauffeuring you around. Uh, you have a tight schedule, so we need to get you to Mr. Strauss's. Uh, ASAP. Works for me. Tight schedule? What does that mean? That means no sightseeing. Now let's get in the car. Okay. So you two start heading up towards the deck. Um, so you head on to the dock. You notice right up front there is a uh, black uh, shipping van uh, waiting for you on the outside. Hop in. Okay. Uh, as you hop in, uh, you notice the driver, uh, fairly young kid, uh, maybe late 20s. Uh, he's got swept back, brunette hair, uh, clean shaven, suited up. Yeah, you notice he has a piece on him. <clears throat> Uh, so I'm uh, taking you guys uh, out to Strauss's? Correct. Uh, post haste, please. Oh. Jacob, is it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's nice to meet you all. Pleasure. All right. Uh, Jacob, you like uh, music? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite band? Um, well, I, 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 uh, Green Day. Green. You ever heard of this band called Prophets of Memphis? I don't know what that is. They're really good. They're up and coming. But maybe the next big thing. You should probably check them out. Are they on Spotify? Yeah, they're on Spotify. Mm. Um, is, he, is it related to that Memphis guy that died a while back? It's a tribute band. Tribute band to an EDM artist? Yeah. What kind of music do they play? Punk. <laughs> How's... How, wait, all right. How is that a tribute? Because... Wouldn't you think, also have to be an EDM nope, artist? No, they. I mean, that's the thing about Memphis Piper. He was such a visionary that he transcended genres. And the fact that a punk band can pay tribute to him is just a testament. And I mean, a lot of their stuff is saying, like, oh, he might still be alive or something like that. Crazy stuff like that. But uh, that's all hearsay. Your narcissism knows no bounds. Okay, uh, I'll check it out sometime. Yeah, <clears throat> definitely. Starts up the vehicle and uh, begins to take off. As the three of you head into L.A., it's a pretty busy night on the streets. Um, eventually, you head into the downtown area. The van begins to pull up in front of this building. Uh, it's uh, red bricked. Uh, you notice two large green wooden doors, uh, a light on each side of them. At the very top of this building, uh, you see a very uh, circular um, window. Uh, this faint purple glow comes from within. Uh, as uh, you park, uh, Jacob looks at the three of you. Okay, so we're uh, we're here. <clears throat> Jacob. Oh, yeah. All right. Tell you what, you take these two fellers around, um, keep them on schedule. Um, Wait, why don't we just go in with you since we have to be such a tight schedule? I've, I've been given strict orders to basically went outside for the three of you to be done with your business. All right. All yeah. Right. Then you two stay here. Wait, no, I want to meet this uh, you're not, Strauss guy. You're not, hmm. I don't think it's a good idea. I need, I need to learn how to network. All right. We're going we're, we're to play a game about this. All right. You go in with me. Mm -hmm. All right? That's step one. Okay. Step two is you don't speak at all unless spoken to. Okay. And if I do that, then we count the days on the ship towards my release. If you say a single word without being addressed... I will shatter your ribs. All of them. 
But if I don't oh, say then. anything. If you say a peep. Right. Without being addressed, I will break your ribs in front of the regent. But then I'm free. No. <laughs> you will be still. Let's just put a pin in it right now. No. Going you either it. agree to this or you stay in the fucking van. No, we're agreeing to it, obviously. Yeah. Your ribs? Yeah. Uh, it takes some time. Uh, it took you a bit to heal your neck injury. Okay, so about the same amount of time. If he breaks all of them? Uh, no. It's gonna take longer. How much longer? He has to get to your ribs. You have to understand that, right? Oh, got you. No, I got you. Yeah, totally. Let's do that. I'm not... I'm not playing with you, Memphis. Please do not embarrass me. I'm not gonna embarrass you. Okay. You're already doing that by what you're fucking wearing. Right. <laughs> uh, this is gonna be the new style. It's a cheap Halloween costume. It's more than a cheap Halloween costume. I'm getting out and walking up to the door. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and knock on the front door. I'm actually kind of glad that one of the sailors gave you a new shirt. That last one was very. Um, Vulgar. It was hilarious. No, it was vulgar. It was hilarious. Do you knock on a door. I uh, I you notice stained. the large green doors begin to creak open and open into the chantry. I walk in. Okay. As you walk in, Memphis, do you follow? Yes. As the three of you walk in, the doors close behind you. Uh, the first thing you're greeted with is a very, um, very dated uh, uh, surroundings. Uh, you notice that the walls will have wood panelings. The wallpaper looks like it's fresh out of the 70s. Um, you see a flight of stairs to your right that look like uh, they lead uh, deep into the chantry for you. <clears throat> Good evening. Hello, is anyone here? Don't hear anything. All right, well, I guess we'll just wander around. I'm going to walk down the hallway. Okay, you're going to walk down the hallway? Yep. As you walk down the hallway, um, you uh, look to your left and right. It looks like the hallway goes down, and you begin to notice that the wallpaper changes to this deep red. Go ahead and take a right. Okay. Are there any bookshelves? Is there any bookshelves? Yeah. That you can see? Okay, let me know if we come into a room with a bookshelf. Okay. Uh, can I get a investigation roll from uh, the two of you? Intelligence and investigation, please. Definitely be set to four. That is going to be one, two, three, and four. That'd be a messy... No, not a messy room. Just okay. one. Zero. Zero. Okay. Alistair, as you begin to meander through uh, the hallways of this chantry, uh, it gets this very eerie vibe. It's very similar to the chantry within Chicago. Um, you have this feeling of uh, you're being watched. So uh, you turn around, you notice that Memphis is no longer uh, falling behind you. Memphis, as you check your surroundings, you... You feel lost. You look for Kaido and you look for Alistair and you don't see either one of them. All right. I prepared for this. Left hand on the wall. Okay. So you're just going to keep walking the left hand on the yeah. wall. All right. I, you have a bad decision. Um, okay. I, <laughs> I'm going to uh, keep going down the path I'm going. Okay. As <clears throat> yes, you keep going down the path you're going, um, eventually... Uh, you find yourself in front of uh, two rather large wooden doors. Uh, how you got in front of this uh, doorway, you're not entirely too sure. Um, it's almost like it was directing me to it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and head up to those two doors, and I'm going to go ahead and open. So you uh, begin to open the doors. It creaks open. Um, you can already hear and visibly see the illumination for what seems to be a fireplace. 
Uh, you hear the crackling of the wood and the embers as you make your way inside. Um, it's a very well-polished room. Uh, you notice the windows go all the way up to the ceiling. Uh, long, elegant drapes. Uh, there is a wood... Uh, two rather large wooden bookshelves to the right and left of this white marbled fireplace that's lit and standing in front of it this is uh, rather tall uh, looking individual bald head red trench coat red glasses circular in shape uh, you notice he has a red tie and dress shirt underneath uh, and he's just standing right in front of the this fireplace uh, in front of him you notice there is a long wooden uh, table uh, about coffee table size. Uh, on top of it, you see a black iron cauldron. Uh, it looks rather ornate. It looks like it does have some um, etchings or at least some carvings within it. Uh, you notice some reagents in a bowl next to it. Uh, it looks like a culmination of claws and teeth. <laughs> What was that? <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to uh, make my way over and uh, as I go to sit down, um, <clears throat> Maximilian Strauss, I presume. Oh, I see. Uh, welcome, Mr. Grayson. I have heard quite a lot about you. And I have heard of you. Um, please. You mind if I have a seat? Oh, please. Um, I must um, apologetically uh, admit that my foster child is still loose within your chantry. Um, he is a um, a unique mm. fledgling. Um, not quite, not quite dry behind the ears yet. Well, I am no stranger to neonites. Mr. Grayson, I must welcome you to L.A. I, um, is this your first time here? I have been out on the West Coast a few times um, in the past. Hasn't been since, I think, the 70s. Mm -hmm. But it, um, it doesn't seem to uh, have changed all too much. How is uh, How has things been since LaCroix took his... <clears throat> Since he took his uh, permanent leave of absence. You could say that, yes. Well, uh, things have been rather trying, you could say. Someone's been messing with my ley lines. You can. It could be quite frustrating, but. That's neither here nor there. I'm not here to discuss uh, Vannevar's and I's uh, politics. I, oh, I don't mean to intrude. I'm just curious on the business of Camarilla over here. We'll get it sorted soon. All these barons and anarchs that believe that they can... Pesky anarchs, huh? <laughs> yes. Pesky is a word for it. You know, I could just ask Lady Justicar of the Cinder and take a little trip to the West Coast and I could visit the Anarchs and maybe show them a few things or two. Well, I don't think it's quite necessary to bring in the UC6 in this matter. <laughs> no, this would be more of a personal matter, but I jest. <clears throat> now, are you ready to commence the ritual? I am. I, um, hope it won't be too uncomfortable. Mm. I will say, there is some pain within this, uh, ritual. It's, it's, uh, not a long process, but it's been quite some time since I've delivered a mark of trophy onto a kindred. Well, I am no stranger to pain. Do with me as you must. If you can, could you remove your blazer? I would hate to ruin it. <clears throat> if, uh, let's see here. 
Which hand do you prefer? Right-handed. We'll choose my right hand. All right. Do you own gloves by chance? Um, actually, I always keep a pair, just in case things get wet. Hmm. Well, I would uh, maybe wear those a little bit more often after you get this mark. Understood. It's not quite a good idea to be running around with um, a mark of trophy. It's very unique. So, you know, as he walks over to the cauldron and begins to uh, pour out the reagents, uh, you notice it is, uh, it looks like bestial fangs and claws as he begins to pour them in. Uh, he walks over to a nearby shelf and picks up a flask and it appears to be uh, Vitae inside of it. He pours that within the cauldron and picks it up onto the handle. <clears throat> as he does, uh, where you're seated, uh, you get a really good look at it. Uh, you see different phases of the moon uh, wrapping around it as a band. On the right hand left side, uh, you see some uh, humanoid shapes that uh, bend and arch, and it looks like they're in pain as uh, he uses them as handles. As he walks on over to the fireplace, uh, you notice there's a uh, metal rod that's laid across inside and a hook. He takes the cauldron and hooks it onto it, and it sits there and it begins to stew. Uh, you begin to hear uh, the bubble uh, crack in the beaks, and uh, claws begin to snap within the flames. He walks over to where the uh, fire pulpers are, and he pulls out a rather long one. Uh, on the very end of it, though, uh, you see uh, a crescent moon shape. <clears throat> So it's nothing fancy, but it's, uh, should get the job done. I wasn't the one to pick out this symbol for you Alistairs, but the crescent moon shouldn't be, um, too unfashionable. <clears throat> no. One of my cool members wears a lot of moons, so I feel like it'll just fit right in. Hmm. So. I'm assuming that this is going to, uh be where the pain comes in. Oh, yes. Very much so. You notice he takes the poker and he sticks it into the pot. He leaves it in there for quite a few minutes. And then eventually he pulls it out, uh, glowing red. Uh, he begins to uh, say some incanta incantations and uh, does a somatic gesture with his left hand as he holds the poker with his right. Um, as it uh, begins to glow, it illuminates into this very um, vibrant red. It's almost neon in color as he begins to approach you with it. All right, well, here we go. <clears throat> Can you please give me a... We'll make this a stamina and composure rule. Ah, oh, I'm in this room. And we'll make the difficulty of this... We'll make it five. One, two, three... I'm gonna go ahead and burn a willpower. Sure. Four, five, exactly. Okay. All right. So, uh, you're only gonna take uh, three points of superficial damage. Okay. Uh, that is not halved. As he sears this mark into your hand, and he pulls away, um, you're left with this red crescent moon imprinted on the top of your hand. As you uh, look at it and expect it, uh, it looks like a tattoo. It doesn't look like a brand. That was easier enough. Um, how do you feel? Um, like someone just branded my hand, but um, other than that, I feel great. Mm. That is the mark of trophy. Uh, perhaps you could um, explain a little bit about it. The mark is, can be used in a, a thermogy uh, of sorts to deliver 
reward upon the Alistair on completion of their hunt. It's also a mark to uh, present to officials, show your rank. As of right now, the only individuals that you will report to is the inner circle itself. As you're aware, Alistair is a uh, higher rank than Prince. So, your is it Jackson, right? That yes. proceeds over uh, Prince Chicago. Jackson. <laughs> Childer of another very disappointing Ventru. Unfortunately, Clan Ventru has been doing a lot of disappointment. Especially after Vienna. Hmm. And after what happened in D.C. No. I have a question for you. Please. As he walks over and he grabs a book off the shelf and he files through it and he pulls out an envelope. He unravels it and pulls out the letter that's within inside of it. <clears throat> so... Abraham wrote me not too long ago, and this is not his handwriting. You don't say. He shows you the letter, and <clears throat> yes, we've written to each other in the past, and I've noticed that uh, this is not his handwriting, and he doesn't seem quite himself within the letter. <clears throat> Is everything okay within the Chantry in Chicago? No. Oh. Really now, please elaborate. I was actually, if you have time, was going to discuss a matter that is personal to me. About <clears throat> the Chantry. And one of my coterie members. Please go on. His name is... Dr. Erwin Ruth. He has come upon a curse. It's the only thing I can call it. A brand. It's very similar to the Ouroboros of Clan Zemisi. It's been put onto his hand by unknown circumstances, and since the brand has shown itself, Dr. Dr. Ruth has been transforming into a gargoyle. Those eyebrows perk up. Hmm. I've never heard of such a thing. Either have I. In fact, I haven't even dealt with a gargoyle since the Middle Ages. Hmm. Well, I wouldn't say I'm a expert on the matter, but the transformation to a gargoyle is a one-way street. Uh, is he permanently a, a gargoyle? No. He seemed to can't control the transformations, and when he's in uh, that state, his mind is muddled, you could say. Uh, but he has reverted back to his original form multiple times now. He gains vast amount of strength. He does the transformation, flight, size. Hmm. It's troubling, and when I brought this to Abraham's attention, he attempted to deceive me, according to my coterie members. He's actively trying to either eliminate or in prison, Dr. Ruth. Hmm. It's rather unfortunate. I would think that um, Knox would have reported back on such an issue. Has Knox been working with you? Well, I've been using Knox to investigate any sort of abuse within Were the you clan. aware that he was a Sabbat? I was not. Knox is a Sabbat 
sleeper agent within the Camarilla, and he has been missing since an attack about three months ago. I confronted him, as well as my child, Kaito. He escaped. You know, as he wrings his gloved hands and approaches the fire and puts his arms behind him and sets up parade rest. <sighs> Mr. Grayson, there's apparently some rather worrisome events that have happened within my clan, apparently, and I have don't have eyes anymore within the Chicago Chantry. How about I make an offer to you? You have your hands filled with your ley lines and Vanivar here in LA and whatever the hell the Anarchs are trying to do. I'll return to Chicago. I'll be your eyes and your ears. Hmm. And what would you like in return? Mr. Grayson. I want Dr. Ruth to be brought back into Clan Tremere at an elevated position. Get him off the bottom of the pyramid. After all, he has an ability that none of you seem to know about. If he's able to learn more about it and study it properly, perhaps this is some sort of blood sorcery or thermaturgy that you all are unaware of. Hmm. Why not? Let's see if this Dr. Ruth proves to be valuable. I'll send word out. I'll get a hold of Praxis and well, make the arrangements. Good. And I will report to you strictly by letter. I wouldn't have it any other way. I still have a few of my old reliables for ground handling on mail courier. It's been a long time since I've used that, so it'll be fun. Also, one more thing. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Grayson? Let's say your suspicions are correct, and that is not Abraham mailing you. Then who is it? And what do we do about it? <sighs> Concern was brought up to me a while back, when Abraham returned from the war. Apparently he returned different, according to Arashio. Horatio has been writing me in secret, keeping tabs on Abraham. Ballard? Horatio. Nikolai's other childer. Whatever, whoever it is, it's no Abraham. And he's doing a very poor job as acting regent. I would like to oust this individual. And since I am down an investigator, I may have to send my feelers out and acquire a new one. If you can keep tabs on Abraham and ensure that Dr. Ruth uh, continues his studies on this new transformation, then I'll elevate his status and see that you are properly rewarded on behalf of Clan Tremere. Very well. When I return to Chicago, I will lay low. I will keep eyes on Abraham, and when you are ready to strike and out him, then I will be ready. Has uh, this Saban infiltrator been dealt with? As of right now, we know that Knox, Ramsey, and Yamaguchi were all 
Sabat infiltrators. Hmm. That's three, and when you see one roach, there's a hundred more. Hmm. I'm particularly asking if is Nox a problem still? He's unaccounted for. And judging from his thirst for violence, yes, I would say he is most definitely still a problem. Well, my new Leopointed Alistair, I'll be adding a new name to the Red List. And you will have new quarry that you will have to fetch after. I'm sure the Inner Circle will get a hold of you and update you on your Athenius. Beautiful. A good hunt. Seems about right. Without any more interruptions, I believe I've taken a lot of your time tonight. Very busy man. Mm-hmm. I'll leave you to your studies. Thank you. And, uh, I'll make sure your child finds the way out. And his companion. You have a good night, Strauss. Good night. And I'm gonna walk out. Okay. As you walk out, Memphis. <clears throat> uh, you are still currently lost within the chantry. <laughs> Why don't you give me another uh, investigation roll? Uh, it is going to be the same definitely of four. No. What'd you get? Three. Three. Okay. As you begin uh, walking around the hallways and trying to find Any your... bookshelves. Trying to find some bookshelves, uh, you eventually come to a uh, opening that leads into uh, what looks to be uh, some sort of study. There are bookshelves. There, there are, are bookshelves. Books. Yes. Uh, you see a small coffee table with a book on top. Uh, you see a uh, rather small uh, lounge couch. Uh, it looks like it's used for relaxing and reading. I'm going to go into the bookshelf. Okay. One of the bookshelves. I'm going to start going through the books? No. Does it look like it might be a secret passage? You going to try to move it? No, I just want to know if it looks like there might be a secret passage behind it. Any breeze coming out? Give me an investigation roll. Uh, intelligence investigation. No, Three. Three. So you begin inspecting it, and you've been feeling around the edges, trying to get a breeze, kind of size it up, see if it's hollow anywhere. Mm-hmm. As you're doing this, you hear over your shoulder, Hey, what are you doing? I turn around. You see Kaido. Oh, it's just you. Uh, oh, wait. Don't tell Alistair I said anything. All right. What are you doing? And those are books. Memphis, please, just use your words. All right, don't tell Alistair, though. Okay. All right. This Scooby-Doo house definitely has a secret passage. I'm sure there's plenty of them, uh, but it's it's a chantry. Also, where is Alistair? He's speaking with Strauss. You, you know this. That's why we're here. Yeah, but you guys, like, disappeared. It's, it's, it's probably because we're in a chantry right now. It's warded. You, those chantries have wards within them to protect the secrets of the Tremere Hole. Like a fun house. We went over this in class. We've had a whole entire section on chantries. Mm, right. You've been in a chantry multiple times. Uh, yeah, but the walls just didn't change. People weren't disappearing. That is because Abraham wanted us there. Does this guy not want me here? He What's his problem? Just wanted to speak with Alistair. But I wanted to speak with him. Strauss probably doesn't want to talk to you. You, you, you know there's a file on you, right? He's a Tremere, isn't he? Yes, we are in a chantry right now. Should have known. That makes a lot more sense now, Kaido. <laughs> Fucking Tremere's. Fucking <laughs> oh. damn it. Okay. What are the books about? I don't know, 
You started looking through the books? Yeah. Uh, they're blank. They don't have any titles on their binding. What kind of dumbass book doesn't have any titles? I open it up. You open up, it's blank. There's no words in here. It's just probably a... Um, Is name. it Warden 2? It's probably Warden. Stupid! I'm you throw it? it? Yeah. Okay. Good. This place is dumb. Good. Good job. Hmm? Hmm? I threw the book. Sounded like a lot of dice. Okay. Can I get a, uh... Could you give me... Give me a willpower roll, please. I think you just threw, like, one of the Adam's Family books. By a Tremere? Oh my god. I will haunt the shit out of this Chantry. Uh, messy critical for seven. You got seven? Yeah. Okay. You throw the book. So what are we supposed to do now, Kaido? Uh, for one... Not throw things. He walks over, he picks the book up, and he puts it back. These guys are terrible house guests. Can you just not do any of this right now in here? Well, what are we supposed to do? Wait for Alistair. Doing? Nothing. N We're just supposed to exist? In a room? You understand you are an immortal being, correct? Yeah. And eventually, uh, doing oh. stuff, human stuff, will just become mundane. Well, what stuff will I be doing? You, you probably get old enough where you will be doing nothing, where you will just want to sleep. Just sleep? Yes. I'd rather be dead. I've met a lot of elders since I've been with Alistair, and uh, they are very... Emotionally withdrawn. That will never be me. Uh, just give it time, Memphis. <laughs> I'm gonna live forever. Yes, I just, I just, I just said that. I know, but I mean, I'm going to live, as in do things, forever. Okay, Memphis. I should get that tattooed. Alistair, as you're walking out, uh, you eventually come to an opening to your left-hand side in the hallway. You hear two individuals talking. Uh, eventually, you uh, can identify it's both Memphis and Kaido. I'm going to walk to the entryway. <clears throat> Kaido? Memphis? Uh, it, look. Everything, no. Everything's been uh, wrapped up. Everything fine? Everyone? Yes. Uh, we're, we're fine. Yeah. Memphis, I'm actually quite proud of you for uh, waiting. Yeah, just sitting here, existing. Manipulation yes. is subterfuge. <laughs> Wits and uh, insight, please. That's a good roll for me. Is that a bad roll for you? No. Can you make it a bad roll for you, please? Uh, four. Uh, also four, but I do have a uh, critical with it. You have a critical? Yeah. <laughs> Odds or evens? Uh, evens. Odds. Prime. Prime number. Prime number. I switch it to prime. <laughs> so what he has. <laughs> I want a prime number. So it seems Memphis is... Uh, it looks like he's hiding something. Well, I'm sure you stayed here and didn't move a finger as I look at Kaido. But uh, I'm going to motion for them to start coming with me to leave yeah. as we're walking towards the entrance. Well, I actually have something quite, quite special for you, Memphis. Is it going to hurt? No. No. Well, it's going to hurt potentially for someone else, but... Um, okay. I'm listening. Um, so, I 
No, it's still very fresh, but when you disappeared, it was right before Christmas. And I had gotten gifts for everyone. Oh. I had a gift for you. Um, also, just being who I am and uh, with as many Christmases as I that I've seen. Do you call it Christmas, by the way? I, I don't know. I call it Yule, but everyone calls it something different. doesn't matter. Yeah, it's, it's Christmas. Christmas for you? Yeah. Okay. Santa Day. Santa Day. Mm -hmm. The happy winter. But... But, um, I don't really like getting materialistic things, so I like to try to get things that are very emotional or very important to the, to the gift okay. receiver. So I realized that you and I haven't really spent a lot of time together without me screaming at you. Did you give me a megaphone? I did not get you a megaphone. No, Memphis, I'm, what I'm saying is that not only do I think we should probably spend some more time to get to know each other, but I got you the only thing that I really knew that you'd be interested in that was emotional for You're you. giving me the wraith. No, I'm not giving you the wraith. That is materialistic. That's not even emotional for you. Okay. Um, I, I just... I don't get this game. I... All I remember you is you spent about a week bitching about some man named The Weeknd... And yeah. talking about how they he plagiarized and stole your, your, your material. So, my gift, uh, um, well, we're going to kidnap the weekend. I'm going to let you just kick the shit out of him. Um. Oh. Yeah, I, I... No, no. That sounds amazing. Right. Good. Glad you like it. Um, don't work, Kaido. We'll make sure he doesn't remember anything. Yeah, because he'll be dead. I've actually done this before. <laughs> oh. What? No, you're not killing him. Oh, right. Don't kill him. Right. Don't kill him. I don't want him to disappear. We're going to ghoul him. Otherwise, we're going to have the John Lennon problem all over again. We'll ghoul him, huh? That was a bad one. Actually, now I think about it, maybe this is a bad idea. No, no. Alistair, I'm speaking from the heart here. This is your... Very best idea you've ever had. Right. Well, uh, first we gotta get back to Chicago. Okay. We make our way to the van. Wait a minute. We can't take a boat to Chicago. We're not taking a boat to Chicago. We're taking a plane. We're, we're flying? Boat. Yes, I told you that when we were on the boat. I just remember you saying, oh, we can't fly because of something. We're gonna be taking a private. Private plane. Why couldn't we have done that from Japan? Because typically private planes are smaller and don't have enough gas to get across the ocean. Hmm. Even in year 2020? Well, we really want to make sure that the, the vessel is uh, very, very small so it doesn't show up on radar. Okay. And we also fly illegally, going way too low. Hmm. Nice. Or way too high. Why don't we just take a helicopter? Also would not have enough gas. You, do you know how a helicopter... With the van, yeah. Okay. You eventually get to the van and pile in. Jake's waiting for you. Alright, uh, you guys ready to go? Ready to leave. Okay. Uh, gonna, well, we'll head out to the private airfield and... Have the three of you within Chicago by, um, within four hours. Also, just Excellent. heads up, shotgun. That's, that's, uh... I, I, I did technically just call it. That's so. where the co-pilot sits. Not you, anymore. You don't know I how to fly a plane. I literally just called shotgun. You don't even have The a, rules of shotgun are strict. You don't even have a driver's license, Memphis. Yeah. You're not sitting in the co-pilot. Uh, I played Flight Simulator. Is there already a co-pilot? Yes, um... Uh, you... There's no shotgun in, in, in a private jet. Why don't you come and sit with Kaido and myself in the back and we can kind of just sit down and all talk to each other and just... relax. Gotcha. And do what? Like, talk to each other. I just talked about how I don't know anything about you. I want to learn more about you, Memphis. Like, like over checkers or... 
Do you play chess? Can you just communicate without fucking doing another task? What? Um, I could try to arrange there to be board games in the jet. Yeah, just, just bring board games just as a safe, a, a good fallback. But yeah, we can talk. We can talk. Alistair, how are you? Jake does start driving towards the airport. Doing the private airstrip. Doing fantastic. Mm. Thank you. Okay. As Alistair, Memphis, and Kaido head towards the airport, we're going to switch scenes back over to Marilyn and Irwin. Marilyn. Yeah. As the two of you arrive outside of Alcott Oddities and you pay the cab driver uh, some moist hundred dollar bills. Uh, I, I I don't I don't I don't uh, got change. Oh, you can keep the change. That's fine. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. It's like three hundred dollars right here. Yeah, you earned it. All right. You have a nice night. Come on, Erwin. You have a nice night. All right, I need you to take off your robe. Why? Just give me a robe. Okay. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna put all the books and the scroll and everything in there. I'm gonna oh. tie it up. Okay. I'm gonna throw over my shoulder. All right. All right. Let's go inside. Okay. As you go inside, uh, I, it seems the shop's closed for the night. You open it back up and you walk in. Um, are you turning on the lights or are you just... No, waiting? no. All right. Be really quiet. Oh, okay. We're going to go down into the basement. Okay. All right. I'm going to, like, really quietly close the door okay. and lock Sneaky. it. Sneaky. All right. Dex and Stealth. And we get tiptoe. Like Dex and Stealth. Dex and Stealth. No, uh... No set difficulty for this. One. Okay. Yeah. Roll all my hunger deck. For the love of God. One. It's better. <laughs> okay. So you sneak in into Alcott's and you begin heading down the stairs. And you slide open the secret book, uh, bookcase that leads into the study. And walk in. <clears throat> Alright. So, here's what we're going to do, okay? We're going to take the stuff. I'm going to take you. I'm going to take you back. I'm looking around the room. Okay. There's no one in there, right? <laughs> Doesn't appear that there's anybody in there right now. Are the lights on? Can hmm? I turn the lights on? You didn't say so. I want to turn the lights on okay, you... before I say anything else. <laughs> you click it on? Yeah. Me. Oh my god. All right. See Francis. Uh, Frederick's standing there with a broom as he's holding it. Francis, what are you doing down here? Are you just sweeping in the dark? You should be down here. Why don't you? What? Why don't you go upstairs and get yourself a nice little uh, uh, fruit punch? All right, out of the fridge. Why don't you go help yourself, okay, bud? Okay. Let's see. Uh, starts walking towards the bookcase and he's holding the broom. He bends down to go outside of the entrance and he looks behind and looks at the two of you. Me. I'll be up in a little bit. Me. Walks upstairs. Well, that was fucking weird. I don't know what he was doing down here in the dark. I'm gonna start looking around. You I think it'll be weird. You hear uh, the jingle of uh, a very familiar sound. It sounds like a collar. Oh, and no. you hear little footsteps coming down the stairs. And you hear Frederick stop about head halfway. Oh, no, no, no. Stay, stay here. I'm gonna go out. Rebel. Rebel, rebel, rebel down. Uh, down, boy, no, uh, bad. He's pulling on the broom as he, you see Frederick trying to, oh like, shove him off oh of it. God, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, no, no, it's okay. No, 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 Francis, Francis, no, it's all right. I'm gonna, I'm grabbing rebel, I'm picking rebel up. Oh my god. Rebel, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start rubbing his belly. I'm gonna scratch him. All right, all right. Oh my god. All right. I need you to be a good boy, all right? I'm trying to do stuff. You know what? You come with me. Francis, I'll be right up. 
I'm, I'm sorry about Rebel, okay? As he won't he do it again. Squeezes by the two of you as he slides up the stairs. As he does, you see Rebel's... Ah! Now, Rebel... Bad boy. Bad. Stop. All right, I'm going to take him back in. Okay. I'm going to... In the study, I'm going to step down. I'm going to close the bookshelf. Okay. Behind me. You know, as he... Friend looks at the bookshelf and he begins scratching at the corner of it. Rebel, what is going on with you tonight? Rebel, Rebel, Rebel. Woo! <gasps> Stop. Stay. Stay right there. And you know, his ears kind of go down. He begins looking around. All right. All right, Erwin. Anyway, what was I saying? Um. What was that? You know, this Rebel begins to wander around the study. <sighs> All right. Uh, this is supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be easy for me. I didn't think this was going to happen tonight. All right. I mean, you know what we're just going to go for? It. I'm not going to explain it to you. We're just going to do it. And I'm going to go and I'm going to open up uh, to get back into the secret passage. Okay. You want to go back down there? God, that's the only way we're going to find out what's going on. I'm going to ask him. Okay. okay. He'll be fine. He's nice. You Actually, you won't even hear or see him anyway. It's just going to be me. Oh, okay. So you don't even have to deal with him. I think. Oh, I'm going to head in. Okay. Alright, you head in? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Alright. I'm closing you, it. You're closing the bookcase behind you? Well, I'm not going to latch. Does it, how's that work? Is it a latch? What is it, how's it? Uh, it's got a latch on the inside of it that you notice that it clicks close. Uh, so you Can I open it from the inside? theoretically undo the lock from the inside. Alright, well, I'm not going to latch it. I'm just going to, like, barely close okay, it. Barely close it? Mm-hmm. Alright. Uh, it is rather dark in there, so um, the only light that's coming into the room Fuck. is from the crack. Fuck. Erwin, hmm? do you have like do you have like a lighter on you or something? A lighter? I can't I can't see Erwin. Oh, um, I might. Um. All right, you know what? Forget it. We're just gonna feel our way around. Actually, I don't think I have anything to help with that. <laughs> okay, Is wait, there any candles down here? I'm gonna open the door, and move back into the study, okay. and see if there's like any candles or anything like there's that. Candles, yeah. All They're right. not lit. Is there a lighter or matches or something to go with the candles? You begin filling around Diedrich's desk and eventually you find some matches. Alright, this is taking too long already. I'm nervous as fuck, right? I'm gonna light it. We gotta get this done now. So why? Oh, should we not be doing this No, at we all? should not. I'm gonna be going in. Why are we doing it? Okay. Just follow me. Shut up. Don't be loud. Okay. Okay. You know, so you follow Marilyn in with, uh, she's holding a candle in hand. I'm gonna, like, barely close it again. You can see barely close it. The, so the candlelight illuminates the room. You see that, uh, old wooden, uh, uh coffin, uh, on the floor. Alright, hold this. Uh-huh. Alright, I'm gonna go to open it. Okay. As you go to open it, or when you notice as Marilyn begins to peel back this, um, lid to the coffin, it just kind of pops right off. Um, as it does, she sets it off to the side, and you see Felix laying there. All right, this shouldn't take very long, okay? I just need you to come come up here, come come up next to me, just in case I just in case I need do your you hand. Do you need to do anything at all? No, just stay in there. Okay. All right. I'm gonna put my hands down. Okay. I'm gonna put my hand over like Felix's hand or something. All right. Okay. All right. We're gonna get this figured out, okay? Okay. I would do the premonition. Okay, go ahead and give me a premonition roll. All right. Uh oh. What? Uh oh, what? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I feel like we just brought Kukula back to one of his servants. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're the best Uber ever. <laughs> what if he can possess your body now? <laughs> As you begin to focus and you put your hand on top of your grandsires, you notice his cold hands begin to close around yours. Feel that cold palm press against yours and as it does, he... <gasps> wakey, wakey. As he sits up, he... Almost very, like, nosferatu like comes out of the coffin. 
so. So a puff of uh, dust comes out of his mouth. That doesn't look pleasant. Uh, yes, my dear. All right, so I went to your place. Amazing, by the way. 10 out of 10. Thank Loved you. it. I actually kind of want to live there myself. So, while we were down there, um, ran into someone of two people, specifically a Philip. Ah, uh, Philip. Can you tell me what, what's his deal? Um, well, he's a, uh, divorcee, or a little permanent, you could say. Yeah, he told us that part. I just thought it was weird he had no idea, like, how long he'd been down there. Well, they, uh, the Veil or the Shadowlands can do that to an entity. Mm. It's not, you know a lot uh, about the Shadowlands? You could say that, yes. I was studying it for quite some time. Oh. What else were you studying? Oh, this and that. I have an array of interests. Like anything special that I should know about at all? Nothing that comes to mind. Oh. Alright. Well, is Erwin can like is Erwin's image here at all? No. Just you and your grandson. Okay. Well, I have a question for you. Mm. My friend Erwin. Yes. He's been dealing with some some interesting uh, shenanigans lately. He, he keeps getting this mark on his hand. It looks like a Zamitsi clan symbol almost, and he's been turned to a gargoyle. Hmm. I thought maybe, because I started looking through some of your, your fine collection in your library, I thought maybe you might know something about it. Well, it does sound infernal. If you ask me, he could have been delving into um, demonic means that he's not aware of. Uh, is he your friend a Tremere by chance? He is, yeah. Well, their kind likes to mess with forces that they don't come quite understand. Oh. Well, Alright. Though if I had my study at my disposal, I may be able to um, come up with a solution for your friend. Well, see, the other person I ran into down there was your Nosferatu friend. Khalid? That one. Oh, how's Khalid doing? It's pre pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> He was telling me some things about you. Oh, really? Yeah. Some, some things that were kind of disturbing. How so? Well, he, he was telling me that you got really mixed up with a few bad things. Well, there's a couple bad things I've gotten mixed up with. Like what? Well, it was, um, that trim, that Zemitsi that we dealt with a while back. Um, Augustus. Augustus? Yes. He was um, performing experiments, uh, particularly on twins. Uh, he had an interest within. Uh, well, that's how I found Diedrich. Uh, yeah. Mm hmm? It was a while back. Beckett and I. We went out on a expedition. We were. You could say adventures. We were investigating a Zemitsi by the name of Augustus, and he was performing procedures on children. We were fortunate enough to rescue Diedrich, but the twins, Carl and Ludwig, uh, they were lost. Uh, Carl and Lewin von Kaiser? Yes. We've been dealing with them, or we were. Really, no. Well, Alistair, he's our, like he's like our coterie leader. He has been mixed up with them for a while. So the, the one... Alistair been, Grayson? Yeah, yeah. Lorienko's um, adopted child. Yeah, how do you know him? Well, I... I have a fairly good memory. I've been in the city for quite some time. Oh. And I've had talks with Lorienko in the past. Lorienko would come to me for any sort of... Uh, occult means he needs. I was a, a bit of a dealer of sorts for 
Tremere, a uh, kindred who had uh, interests within that field. But, is there anything else you want to ask me, my dear? You seem troubled. Oh, no, no, I, I was just particularly hoping that, that maybe we could figure out how to help Erwin. Well, without my study at my disposal, I'm uh, not much help, especially here. Yeah, um, about that, I, I need, I need to, I need to talk a few things over with my, my coterie before I make like a final decision on what, what we're gonna do about your situation, you know, because I can't do it by myself if something goes wrong. Well, yes, uh, you would need um, a sufficient amount of vitae for me. I will awake and be very ravenous, uh, probably attack you and your friend and oh. want to feed. Yeah, I didn't even think about that part. Um, yes. Yeah, that sounds like it'd get real rowdy down here in the basement. Um, He's uh, keeping me in the basement. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're in his study in a hidden room, like behind a bookshelf. I just happened to come across it. Um, yeah, you looks like you've been here for a while. Yes, I've apparently been here for quite some time. Well, I understand that you may not trust me. We are meeting for the first time. But we are blood, in a way. I mean, you seem pretty level-headed, aside from the vision I had about you and everything. Like, how, how? Vision? How can you say? Yeah, I saw... I'm assuming what happened between you and Diedrich. Something happened. Did you just enter his no no square? <laughs> Can I get a wits and answer from you? Is wow, when Erwin rolls, that's a two. If I'm being completely candid with you, Marilyn, your sire one night decided to take his inheritance by force. Okay, well, his inheritance? Everything you see here. I wouldn't release to him where my private collection was. He got rather upset. Mm. He was also upset that I was not willing to train him in the Knights of the Moon. He said he would find another teacher. Somebody else that would teach him. That doesn't sound like... That doesn't sound like Diedrich. Yeah. I don't know what vision you saw, but it was obviously inaccurate. Your sire is a rather spoiled, rotten child. And obviously not a very good sire to you. No, he's been he's he's been great until recently. I won't Blazers. Uh, yeah, re recently. Not teaching you how to be a knight. Yeah. Yeah. Does that sound like a sire that you deserve? Yes, I I'm, I think he's just going through some stuff right now. I'm not going to hold it against him. I'm, I'm mad about it, yeah, but I wouldn't say... But what if he's infected with Kabula? That's one thing I'm worried about. What if he's possessed? Well, what are the odds of that? Uh, well, if he was delving into my collection here, he could have found some... Some of my books, some of my notes. Maybe he got oh. delving into uh, something infernal. You'd be able to help him if that's the case? Yeah, oh, yes. Way must so. Would you want to help him after what he did? I can forgive and forget. I, I understand that the beast can be rather 
hard for some to deal with, and Diedrich at the time was still fairly young. He just, well, sired you, and, my dear, I think he sired you for unsavory means. What does that mean? Well. What's an insight, please? Come on. Oh, uh, is that six? Seven? Uh, five. five? Ten. Yes. Oh, five. so six. And then this one? Seven? Four, five, six. I can count six. Yeah, six? Okay. Uh, critical success, by the way. I will leave here. Yeah. I believe he embraced you because he was, well, attracted to you. And. No. I, what? No, that's not. He took many trips out south. He wouldn't tell me at first why he was sneaking off so often. And he embraced you without my permission. How'd he never get into trouble? Because I didn't tell the prince, and you were a secret. Oh. That kind of explains a few things, I guess. Why he kept you hidden from the world. Yeah. I don't, I mean, he can be selfish. I don't think he's that selfish. Makes you wonder if it's really a sire, then. Yeah. Well, my dear, discuss it with your coterie. I can be, um, be quite a bit of help to you and your troubles. Help you with your friend and Dietrich. And maybe we could speak on, um, amending those, um, harsh feelings. All right, uh, I'll be back soon. Thank you. Thank you, and I'm looking forward to uh, having some more one-on-one -on -one time with my grandchild. Uh, there are many things I can teach you that I've never taught Diedrich. Things he has no idea about our order and what it's truly about. I'm gonna... As you begin to peel your hand off of his, you see red strands begin to come out of your fingertips. And as they do, you watch strands come out of his. And for a split second, you watch them as they connect and they dissipate. So yeah, nothing, no dice there right now. Um, he but he said he might be able to help help you if I can get him to study. What? I told him we're gonna wait. I'm gonna have I'm gonna get together with the rest of the coterie and talk about it. It seems um. Um, what? A bit s scary. Um, what else? What other option do we have? Heavily involved with Capilla somehow. Well, he was honest about. Well, he told me like he was honest about things that he was getting into. He wasn't lying. Like Diedrich's been lying to me. Sorry. No, oh, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I, I. I don't know. I. I, did, I don't know if you're. Your sire, uh, for very long. You know him way better than I would. Um, Maybe. And I, there was just that moment, called, uh, six or so months ago, where, um, uh, his eyes turned black and everything. It was just really weird. It was really weird. I know. Felix said he can help, though, with that, too. 
He said that he can, you know, train me to be Night of the Moon and other things. He never taught Diedrich. So, he's... Does it sound almost too good to be true? Kind of. We should get out of here. We've been down here too long already. So you begin to exit, and I'm assuming you return the coffin the back to where he was. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's so begin to exit the and close the bookshelf behind you. Uh, you hear a bell chime, a door close, and footsteps walking onto the shop floor. You begin to hear a voice boom out. Ah. <clears throat> Fraulein? Fraulein, you will... What, you downstairs? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're just going through some more books. We're just doing some studying. You begin to hear him come down the steps. And as he does, uh, you notice uh, he's got a rather long black box with him uh, with the handle. If he breaks into the study... Is uh, is everything fine? Oh, yeah, yeah. Every, everything's fine. Everything's great. We're just uh, trying to find some more ways to find Memphis. That's all. Wits and awareness. Challenge is going to be three. So the air is rather tense. You feel that awkwardness. Uh, you feel the insatiable urge to start organizing every single book and pile of documents with this room. The clutter is driving you insane. So you decide to start perfectly uh, categorizing everything and getting everything lined up. Uh, let's see. These books need to go over here. Um, whoa, 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 don't start rearranging stuff. Uh, everything's out of place, out of place, That's out of place. That's how he likes it. Leave it alone. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. It's it's not optimal. You don't have system. The, uh, the, I take a bunch of the books and I the put them, <laughs> put them uh, where they're supposed to be, and then. Uh, um, um, Erwin, Erwin, will you please stop, please? You straighten up your his desk. Uh, Put oh my God. Everything where it is exactly where the knees are. You're acting real weird, Erwin. Throw trash away and uh You notice uh, as Erwin is doing this, uh Diedrich is kind of watching him inquisitively. Uh he puts both palms on top of this long uh black box, uh this case that he has. Um as he rests his hands on top of it, you notice his elbow. You see his dress shirt has a long cut. It looks like there was uh, any some residual blood, but it doesn't appear that he's still bleeding. What have you been up to tonight? I, um, oh, uh, this, I, uh, I've, uh, practicing my, uh, my sword play. See, he takes the case and he places it on the table, he clicks it open, and he pulls out his sword. I was, um, sp sparring. So with who? Some uh, friends that I've made. Yeah, I'm sure you made quite a few friends. Sparring with everybody, huh? I good. don't understand what you... <laughs> good old time just sparring it up. Um. <laughs> that sounds cool. That sounds cool, Diedrich. I'm happy for you. I'm real happy for you. I'm glad, glad you're out there enjoying your life. Making new friends. Is everything okay? Yeah, uh, it's fine. You no, nothing's okay. Everything's out of place and disorderly down here. Uh, oh, Mister, you need to you need to start figure this out. You do. I, you need to figure your life out, uh, Dietrich. Okay, so as apparently you two are rather busy and mm -hmm. I need you two studying. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn in for the night. It's getting rather early. All right. I would um, if you are staying here. I'm going to have to. This is not going to get all clean by itself. Right. Okay, well, you... You have a nice night. See, Dietrich turns around and he begins walking up the stairs. 
sword play. You know what, what that means. I don't know what that was all about. Uh, I know what it's about. Rebel, 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 rebel. Wait, wait, does he have something? As you look at Rebel, uh, he's in the corner of the room, and it appears that he just, just went to town, several oh books. God. He's made a rat's nest of paperwork, and uh, he may have used the restroom. <gasps> Rebel! No! Rebel! I'm going to pick him up. All right, that's enough of that. I'm going to get. I'm going to close the door behind him. You hear scratching on the other oh side. Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, my God. Oh, all right. Starting to wish I just had gotten the blazer. All right. To put in books where they need to be. Okay. Sometimes there it's on the other side of the room. All right. He's just filing away. You know, I found in Diedrich's room recently, Sir Erwin. What's that? Rings. Lots and lots of rings. You know what those rings were for? Women? No. Oh, were they not? Well, maybe. I don't know. This is the stupid. This is nice. He's out there making people knights of the moon. He's making them rings. They get club rings. Does that work for him? What do you mean does that work for him? You, what, you think he's picking people up or something? <laughs> Could you please give me a willpower roll now? <laughs> I need three. Please get three. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. <laughs> so this might be worth a, a roll. Though. You can't willpower roll. You can't willpower roll. Can't willpower roll. Willpower roll. No, <laughs> that'd be even less dice. That sounds pretty meta. I don't know. You uh, would just take away one of your dice. Are you listening to me? Uh, so uh, I got two. Okay. All right. He's just filing away as you're just. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm listening. Of course, I am listening. All right, whatever. So, he and what's he do with these rings exactly? I already said you're not listening to me. You think he's given to just random people? You no, know, forget I, even, I forget, forget I even brought it up. Just do whatever the fuck weird thing you're doing. Okay. No one's ever gonna fucking listen to me anyway. I'm, I'm listening to you right now, Marilyn. Uh, I'm just gonna sit. Go ahead and give me another willpower roll. Jesus Christ, how? How? So he just keeps filing away up into the, the early morning. Uh, you are starting to feel tired, Marilyn. I'm going to fall asleep where I'm at. You're just going to fall asleep where you're at? Life is pointless. Okay. Erwin. Uh, could you please give me one more willpower roll? Have fun coming back to this. <laughs> there you go. I'm already expecting you know it. We're going to do something different. G Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> one. <laughs> so this is what happens. So it gets early enough, Erwin, you begin to feel your blood slow as... You're flying away. You're trying to fight the urge to just stay up and categorize these books. <laughs> um, Marilyn, uh, do you decide to fall asleep? Mm -hmm. Can you please give me a humanity roll now? I need you to do beat. Uh, why don't you go to beat four? Oh, God. <laughs> What'd you get? Two. Okay, uh, you pass out. Following away of these books. Gotta file. Gotta file. <laughs> so you fall backwards with the book in hand and just hit the ground. That is when we go to break. Oh, we get a break. Get a break. Woo! All right, brick button. All right, button. we'll be right back. Uh, we're just gonna take a few minutes. Oh, and oh, it's probably not gonna work. Cause... Oh. Aha. Uh -huh. The button. There you go. There you go. The button. button. We'll be right back. Man, he said he was going to be here. I don't know where he's at. Alistair! Alistair!
Elster! Hey, Elster! God, where did he go? Who are Holy you? Holy shit! Uh, Alistair, it's me! It's, uh, from, from Captain Camarilla. Captain... Wait, that, that was years ago. What do you... Yeah, uh, the, the, the prince wanted a second one. Um, so he, he sent me here. He said you'd be here. And, uh, we, we, we just filmed. A second one about what? About whatever's going on here. Elysium? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome, Kindred. Tonight we're going to be going over court. Welcome to Elysium. Uh, tonight we are going to be talking about the rules and etiquette of Elysium and some of the positions that are involved with it. Think of court like a city hall meeting where there's certain representatives that can listen to your claims or your quarrels. Not that it will really help, but sometimes it does. At least there's someone to talk to. So tonight we're gonna go over some of those positions. Follow me. After you. Is this it? This is dead. That's not a joke. Um, all right, anyways, um, first things first when you get into uh, court is you need to do a weapons check. Uh, weapons are uh, prohibited. So you'll have to meet someone at the door. Hey, there we are, Sheriff. How are you doing? How are you? Doing good, doing good. So you're uh, grabbing all the weapons and everything? Do you have any weapons on you? I do not have any weapons on me. Um, but if I did, I would act. No, wait, I, I do have weapons. Uh, the prince is working. Yes. The prince told me to bring this. That's why I actually even came tonight. Um, it's a, uh, it's a squirt gun. Why do you have a squirt gun? It's a field bass. I don't know. Right? It's, it's just what the prince likes to use. And... Are you just eating... Are you just eating a bag of cocaine? We are in Miami. There's a reason why the Camarilla are not in control of Miami. All right, well, let's move on. So once you get done with the weapons check, one of the next things you want to do is start mingling and socialize. You never know who's going to show up to these things, so let's go ahead and get a feel of the room. Uh, looks like the sheriff is still eating cocaine, so that's good. Um, looks like the sunshine's going over her notes, probably wondering what Princes, and we have an anarch here. The one with a really colorful shirt. Let's watch this. It could be interesting. So, we got two of you. No, repeat after me. Two of you! Two of you! Two of you! Two of you. Two of you. <laughs> yeah. All right, I already know what you're thinking. One, was he drinking blood out of a beer? Yes. Two, is that normal for animals? Also, yes. I'm sorry, I wish I, uh, wish I could introduce you to the prince. That's who, uh, biggest position here in Elysium. Um, I don't know where he's at. He should be here by now. Oh, hello there, Jeez. Hello, Um, uh, this is the camera crew that, uh, the prince wants for, uh, Teach all the newly embraced about uh, at least the court. You see, uh, this is a primogen uh, for Clan Ruha. Uh, there's one of every clan in uh, each domain. So if you are newly embraced for Ruha, uh, then this is the top guy. This is who you go and talk to. Mm -hmm. Don't talk about Carthage. Don't bring up Carthage. Pretty dead here, isn't it? It is very dead. I don't know what it's like. It's dead, it's Carthage. So, some of the other positions that are 
typically hear um, are things like the Hound and the Scourge. Uh, the Scourge is sort of like Border Patrol. They protect the domain outside, um, uh, or at least on the border of it, specifically if you have a werewolf or a sabat problem. <laughs> Two really bad things. And we'll go over those uh, another night. This is actually... This is, Miami's not really Camarilla rat. This is sort of a sabat rat thing. Um, other than that, we also have uh, the Keeper of Elysium, uh, who um, is like the host. They are supposed to um, essentially run the event and make sure everything goes fine, you know, like a good host would. Um, there's... It's very strange and unusual that this is this small here. Normally it's um, a, lot, a lot bigger, a lot more kindred. Oh! Good evening, Adelaide. How are you? I'm great. How about yourself? I'm doing splendid. Oh, that's nice. Um, this is Adelaide. Uh, this is the Harpy. Um, she is responsible for keeping track of all the boons and favors that uh, all kindred have in the city. So, uh, which <laughs> you do such a splendid job at. You do a great job yourself. Oh, you just, that's, uh, she's so good. <laughs> I really don't like you. Um, uh, well, I hope you have a great night. Oh, you as well. Oh, yes, always lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. <sighs> she is insufferable. Buys her. But the Harvey is one of the only other physicians, besides the prince, that can honestly fuck your own life up. Be respectful and nice to the Harvey, or your major boon may get turned into a minor boon, or it might just actually disappear. All right, everyone, uh, it's been five hours. Uh, prince still isn't here. Um, I really don't think he's going to show up. So, at this point, uh, we can wait another hour. Um, you know, well, I ain't waiting another fucking hour. I spent five hours. I got so much shit to do. <laughs> See ya, sir. Take it easy, man. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to do here. So I don't know why uh, they left, but apparently um, I don't. I don't. Hey, that friend's coming to give you a second. Perfect. We we finally we have something. Um, good. All right, everyone. We have a note from the prince. Uh, so this is, was given to me by the, uh, the uh, seneschal. Uh, she is essentially the uh, assistant, the right hand of the prince, and uh, apparently was given instructions. So let me go ahead. And Read this real quick here. <clears throat> Greetings. There is no Elysium tonight. Ha ha. Uh, this was all to film Captain Camarilla Volume 2. Man, I really love that stuff. P.S. I'm down at the Pup and Taco. This is a pretty cool place. You guys should come. P.S.S. The Sabat are on the way. Sabat are on. Wait. Oh, wait a minute. God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Alistair. Alistair, what happened? I forget about that. Listen, can bring There's one more position. We can talk about tonight. My name is an Alistair, for no reason.
we're back. Uh, sorry about the... Um, uh, so let's go ahead and uh, talk about... Uh, since we're not streaming on our normal day on Monday, uh, we apologize. This is us pre-recording it and um, airing it. Uh, we're airing it Tuesday, correct? Yeah, tomorrow. we're going to air this tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. So uh, this will be airing... Well, technically, it would be today. From the past tonight. to the future, From it is airing now. Future. Yes. Uh, so do we have any announcements that we wanted to go over during after break? or? Yes, Carl. Any? Good, we got that. Well, Seriously. we're um, but like nine <laughs> away from a thousand subscribers on YouTube. Yeah. So by the time you're watching this, we'll already be to a thousand. Twelve hour, <laughs> maybe more twelve more hour stream is imminent, <coughs> very imminent. I inhaled my drink. I'm fine. So there will be no after dark, correct? For this week. No after dark this week. Um, we'll have to just push that to next Tuesday. So we'll get back on regular schedule. Basically, what happened is our internet is shit, and we couldn't do a live stream tonight. It just was not working. So. Um, that's going to push After Dark off to next Tuesday, but Thursday, this Thursday, what day is that? 20... That is... 24th? What's today? 21st. Hey guys, what's today? What? Today's the 20th, I believe. No, 21st. <laughs> yeah, today's, today's 24th. Monday. Today's the 24th. So today is Monday the 24th. So it's 21st. Okay, so Thursday, it's 24th. Thursday, Thursday, the 24th. Is it going to be the 4th? It's going to be the 24th. <laughs> Thursday will be the 24th. This Thursday the 24th at 8 p.m. Central, we're doing a um, charity stream to raise money for NAMI for Suicide Prevention Month. And we're going to be playing Among Us, so if you want to get in and try to get a chance to play with us, hop in the chat, and we'll have open spots. We'll, if there's enough demand, we'll just keep cycling. The, the game is a lot of fun to play and just to watch. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Yeah. So, again, on the 28th at 4 o'clock, come and enjoy <laughs> Shut us. up. Thursday the 24th. 24th. 24th, 8pm Central. Alrighty. Is that stream. Cool. And right. then uh, we will... We're starting to put together the schedule for our 12-hour stream, <clears throat> which for sure is going to be starting with the Call of Cthulhu one-shot. We're going to redo it. Um, and then so the rest of the content, we'll let you guys know on social media. Are you still not. playing the uh, Horrible Dad, or are you going to play something new? Mm. You'll have to watch to find out. Oh, God. Oh He's playing Horrible Dad. <laughs> He's going to play Horrible Dad again. <laughs> hey, Jimmy! Oh, my gosh. I don't even know if I can do that voice again. <laughs> But yeah, we don't have a date for that yet, but it will be soon, and we'll let you know when we have a date. To sound like Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. So make sure you're following us on Twitter, especially. <laughs> what and us That's what I picture. Also hop in the Discord, because we update you with everything right away on Discord. Yeah, I actually drew him, didn't I? Yes, you did, actually. That's right. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get back, back into the game. Kendry, the date is July 15th. Thursday. Mr. Grayson, Kaido, and Memphis arrived the night beforehand uh, on July four, uh, 14th. Uh, once you three arrived, uh, you didn't have a whole lot of time. You came back to Alistair's Haven and turned in for the night. So, would all my kindred please give me rouse checks? Are we back to. So you one two, hunger. would correct, will be at one hunger oh, and God. going from there. Oh, man. Please don't These go two, on. it's only been about a night's worth, so. All right. And we'll begin the scene with Memphis. Memphis, you wake within the carriage house. Uh, so you begin to inspect around your uh, hamsters. It appears that they've all been well fed. Your squirrels um, appear to be doing well too. My hamsters are alive? Yes. Oh, awesome. I'm gonna grab a six pack real quick and uh, okay. throw that down real quick. Alright. Uh, so as you <laughs> approach your hamsters and you grab you grab six of them? Yeah. Okay. As you uh, crap, uh, crack open a couple cold ones. Yeah. Warm ones. Warm ones. And you begin draining these hamsters and uh, where oh, you Oh, that takes me back. Putting their husks at. Well, now that I live at the carriage house, I'm right next to the woods, so I can just yeet their bodies into the woods. Okay. As you open out the windows into the uh, night air, and you begin to and you start tusk, uh, throwing their husks into the uh, wilds. All right. So you just six them. Yeah. Go ahead and slake one hunger. 
Amazing. Alright. Alright, and all my stuff is still in there? It looks like all your stuff is in there. Is my phone working? Your phone? Uh, as you inspect your phone, it does look like it can die out of it now. Amazing. I'm gonna get an Uber. Okay. As you go to dial, or at least attempt to get to an Uber, yeah. um, you notice that uh, the internet's not quite working on it. That's weird. I'm gonna go ahead and check on the computer. Okay. Is the Wi-Fi working? Doesn't look like it's working. I'm gonna dial zero to speak to an operator. Okay. You dial zero on your device and nothing seems to happen. What is going on? Is that my squirrels? You look around and you see all your hamsters just staring at you. Can I help you? And they just continue to stare at you as you're standing there in the darkness with your uh, Alvin Simon Theodore. See your squirrels perk up. Ah, oh, boys, I have missed you. You guys hungry? I'm gonna. Uh, right open to my wrist and give him some of my beat okay. As you do that, uh, yeah. as uh, one of them walks over to the opening of the cage, see his little hand slide between the cage, grab onto the latch, see him raise it up, making the unlock it. Oh no, as soon as I would have saw they were in cages. I do not cage my squirrels. Oh, so you're gonna let them out? Yeah. Okay, as you. See that he's trying to let himself out. You just flip the lid. And as you begin to bleed, they... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the good stuff. Give me a rouse check. I just did. Okay, what'd you get? I got... Oh, I passed. Passed? Okay. Um, they uh, continued the drink. Oh, did you boys miss daddy? Give me another rouse check. <laughs> another rouse check? Yeah. I pass that one. They don't appear to be stopping. Okay, well, hey, save some for next time. I'm going to go ahead and pull them off. Uh, doesn't appear that they're wanting to unlatch from you. Oh, no. So go ahead and give me a uh, strength and athletics. Three. Ty goes to my player. Thank God. As you begin to pluck them off, uh, they're taking the skin with it. Oh! Not cool, boys. Go ahead and take one superficial. Uh, as they're kind of. Yeah, I miss you guys too. Um, we're gonna have to catch up, but I mean, the hamsters keep looking at me weird, so I need you boys to make sure they know who's boss. Watching as they t slowly pan over towards the hamsters, back at you. That's right, chain of command. All right, well, you boys have the house for a little bit. Daddy's going shopping. You exit the carriage house? Yeah. All right. Back. So you exit the carriage house. Can you please give me wits and awareness? I need you to be two. We all know everyone only watches this show to see what's going on with the hamsters. We're fucking army. One. You got a one? Yeah. Okay. You walk out of your house. Hmm. What happens to a squirrel when it's taste vampire blood? It becomes gold. Yeah, but did I create three little monsters? <laughs> you create Alistair, little you're awake monsters. within your haven. What would you right. like to do for uh, uh, starting? Can I awake before Memphis? About the bright same time. Right. So first thing I would have done was head down to Memphis's carriage house. Okay. After noticing everything was not working, I would have head to the main house. Okay. Uh, you meet each other about halfway. 
Good, in Memphis, you're already up. Uh, yeah. So, the internet's out, and my phone's still not working. I don't know why you need it. Uh, I have things to do. I'm back in the city. I got people to connect with, business to take care of. Well, first, how about we, uh, how about we head back into town, and we go see Irwin and Marilyn. In fact, I'm actually surprised Irwin wasn't here this morning. Typically, he's still sitting in the sofa in the carriage house crying. In that carriage house? Yes. My carriage house? Yes, he was taking care of your squirrels and your um, hamsters. That's probably why the boys have such a bad attitude. My squirrels, I mean, what are you going to do? Well, you decided to ghoul creatures that have the intelligence of, um, well, a a squirrel. Mm Mm-hmm. Typically, typically you want to not give undead supernatural powers to creatures with low intelligence. Still shocks me. Well, they're fast, though. The same could be said about you. Yeah. I am fast. All right. Um, All right, so we're going to go do them, but then at least half of the night. I've got to take care of We are going to set some ground rules. Okay. I'm responsible for you. Right. Anything that you do, you mm-hmm. as you're aware of, if you fuck up, it's on me. Right, 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 right. And I really don't want to spend every night talking to someone about why you did something. Right. So, this is the ground rule. Okay. I'm going to have an open door policy. You're allowed to come and go as you please. As long as you're always informing me what you're doing. Oh, cool. All right. I can get down with that. The moment you lie to me and you abuse my trust, that is when the open door becomes closed. Do you understand? I don't know. He's trust you. Um. Question. You, we both, as as adults, we both understand the difference between lying and then withholding some of the truth. As a adult, yes, I understand that. Okay, cool. Then yeah, totally. No lying. Do not lie by omission. When I say check in, mm-hmm. you tell me where you're at and what you're doing. That's all I'm requiring. Is that hard? That's not. That's not very difficult. If I say, Memphis, where are you? And you say, red number nine, with blah, blah, blah. Yeah, sure. As long as it's like, I'm able to. Yeah, no problem. But if I'm deep, like I'm deep undercover, and I can't blow my position, I might hit you with the red, but I will get you back. I'll let you know. Okay. How about this? Yeah. If you're in, if you're deep undercover, right? Just message me. Let's come up with a code word. Pumpernickel. Pumpernickel. That works. It's very strange. So mm-hmm. there's no reason why you should be messaging me pumpernickel. So if you say me pumpernickel, I will know that you are. You don't. You don't like bread, right? I haven't, no, I haven't eaten bread in a very long okay. time. All right, yeah, then pumpernickel will work. Okay, so if you send me pumpernickel, mm-hmm. that means what? I'm, I can't tell you where I'm at, and I'll tell you later. No, no, that's, no, 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 no. You, you're going to send me pumpernickel. Right. If someone's watching you. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to tell me where you're at. Right. But if I did, it would fall under the pumpernickel clause. You're you're, you're making up rules now, Memphis. You're making up Memphis rules. I thought we both agreed pumpernickel was the code word. Code word? Yes. If someone's watching you. Mm -hmm. 
And at that point, I wouldn't be able to tell you where I'm at. Right. Right. But if no one was watching you, mm -hmm. and you're by yourself, right. you should always be able to message me what you're doing. Yeah. Unless my phone's being watched. Or if I have some... some if I have suspicion that someone's watching my phone. Yeah, that would No be. one's watching your phone. <laughs> Kaido has made sure no one's watching your fucking phone. Okay. Then yes. God. Also, Kevin's going to be very, very happy to know you're back in town, by the way. Ooh, He's what if literally just... been asking me nonstop for three months. Yeah, let's not tell him right away. Why? Because I'm not ready to open up that game. Because of him and your mom? Yes, because of him. And my mother. He's been treating your mother splendidly. I don't right. want to hear it. There's your phone answering. <laughs> Hello? Hey, hey, it's uh, it's me. Uh, it's uh, is Dummy with you? Um, yes, he's with me. They're just going over the, the new house rules. Is that the prince? <laughs> this is, this is Kite. Oh. Alright. Hey, buddy. Well... <laughs> Jackson knows that we're back in town. Does he know about Memphis? Yeah, I'm assuming he's hoping that you're, he's with you. Oh. So he's holding Elysium tonight. It's about number five. So okay. try to be there. I tried messaging Marilyn when we got back last night, but she hasn't responded. Ooh, if it's Erwin, don't tell him I'm in town. Yeah, I was trying to track her phone. I, I can't find it anywhere. Um, I don't know what's going on with that. I'm going to just stop by Alcott with uh, Memphis. Hopefully, hopefully Irwin's there because Irwin wasn't here um, when we got back last night either. So I'm 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 sort of worried about him because you know the whole Tremere trying to can kill him. So. Yeah, that um that could be bad. All right, I will see you with the rest of the coterie at Elysium. All right, where is it being held at? Red number five. Gotcha. See you there. See you there. All right. We're gonna head over to what? You just said Elysium. Yes. Prince of Elysium. <sighs> Can I get a Memphis roll, please? Oh, so <laughs> here we go. It's, uh, go and give me straight willpower. Uh, it's gonna be a straight make willpower. A, yeah, three three successes. What I want. Okay. <laughs> Is it, is it Carl, Carl trolling Queen? Or is it Memphis trolling? Oh. There's no difference. It's two on two. It's two, two successes. on two. They're the same people. <laughs> so you feels this unbridling fury that you haven't felt in quite some time. Um, you haven't felt this infuriated. Uh, not even during the uh, raids on the Sabbat strongholds uh, were you this angry. So maybe I just sit this one out? No. And... No. No. You okay? No. <laughs> I'm not okay. You want to know why I'm not okay? Because I got the greatest headache ever again. It's back. I feel it. Right here. You know what the best part about that is? We don't get headaches. Huh? You're going to come with me to Elysium. And be a good boy. Okay. okay. But, question. Do we tell Kevin Jackson? Or well, can I tell him that I was eaten by a true fae and then killed it, Trojan horse style, <laughs> and then everything went black? No. What we're going to do is we're going to tell... <gasps> oh, gonna... the prince from Tokyo kidnapped me and... No. No. We're going to tell Kevin that you were helping me and Lady Jessica. And it was mm -hmm. on a need-to-know basis. Got you. 
So that what means were you doing over there anyway? Killing things. Does that, that like sound it? like does that sound like fun killing things? It sounds like something you would enjoy. <laughs> Believe it or not, I don't. I don't enjoy just killing things all the time. Sometimes I just want to. Sometimes I just want to sit down. And just talk. That's what we're gonna do tonight, Memphis. We're gonna go to Elysium after we see our coterie members that haven't seen you in months. I do miss the dark. And we're not going to cover you in flour and pretend you're a ghost. <clears throat> That's right. Can we at least scare him? No. Just go to the garage. Get in the wraith, please. Alright. Of course, you don't know how to drive. <laughs> I'm gonna head to the wraith. Okay. Let's wait till Kendra get into the vehicle and head towards Al Qadadis. We're actually going to change scenes. <laughs> Dr. Earl Ruth, mm -hmm. um, you were aware that there is Elysium tonight. Yeah. Uh, and told me that you uh, decided to finally uh, venture out into uh, uh, the technological field and get a cellular device. Yeah. It's a, it's a very plain Jane uh, uh, smartphone uh, prepaid that you've acquired. Uh, nothing spectacular. Been uh, rather careful with it. Uh, do you awake within your haven? Is there anything that you would like to do before you head out for the night? Um. Yeah. I'm going to. Uh, yeah, I'm going to check on. Um. Oh shoot! What is his name? Sam. Sam. That's right. So you, uh, you're gonna go to his room? Um, I'm gonna knock on his, just, yeah, knock okay. on his door. Uh, within uh, about, about two weeks time, uh, you finally come to terms on some living arrangements. He's uh, staying in the guest room. As you go to knock on the door, um, you already notice that it's wide open. Uh, his room, a pigsty, uh, clothes thrown about, uh, notes scattered everywhere. Uh, as you look inside, it doesn't appear that he's in there. I close the door. Okay. As you close the door, you hear the front door um, open wide and it slams against the door. You hear the chain uh, rattle back and forth. You hear grunting. I go look what that is. Okay. As you go to look what it is, it looks like it's Sam. <clears throat> hey, you, uh, you gonna help me with this? You see him with a large, wide, uh, uh flat screen TV box. <clears throat> um, yeah. So, um, hope you don't get mad, but I had some guys come out during the day. They, uh, put cable in the place. Don't worry, I'm paying for it. And, um, you gonna help me with this, or? Yeah. Alright, so, um, uh, yeah, and, uh, so, brings it over, uh, you look, and there's a brand new, uh, television stand, uh, Looks like the box and bubble wrap and all the tools are still laying out on the floor. All right, all right, all right, all right. Hey, here. You yeah. Seem to have been busy. Yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you Netflix. <laughs> Netflix. Yeah. What is it? It's a, it's a streaming service. It's television. Yeah, I know what television is. TV mm -hmm. shows, movies. Yeah. Hmm. So, um, what are you doing tonight? Uh, I have a important meeting. Um, are are you gonna be good tonight? Do you need? Yeah. I'm gonna do some Netflix and chill. Okay. Sure. Hope you don't mind. No, uh, that's fine. Um. Did you have time to? Unpack all those books. 
Oh, I'll get to it. It's um, they're in a box in there somewhere. Yeah. Okay. So it's co- cool with you if I Netflix and chill. That's uh, sure. That sounds fun. Awesome. Right, awesome. You're you're good on food and everything. You're fine. You know, he's texting on his phone. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I put my straighten up my robe. Get a couple of blood bags. Put them in my pockets. You are not. No, I'm heading out to the living room. So, no. do we use. So, do you put a sock on the door or what do you do? Huh? How do you. How do you. Like, what system do you want to. What do you want to work with? So, what? It's fine. I'll just put a sock on the door. It's fine. <laughs> Why? Netflix and chill. Okay. Um. You, you, you do you, I guess. Um, okay. I'm going to use my new phone and. Is that like o- a... Order an Uber. You need uh, you need help over there. No, I'm fine. He comes around. And he's looking over your shoulder. <clears throat> so it's supposed to be some button I push for. You're just, you're just going me, home over and over me, again. Someone pick me you up. Keep, you keep uh, going home. Yeah. No. No, you... This button right here. See, see the one that says Uber? Yeah. Oh. Click on it. All right. Right. All right. You see that little little bar there? Okay. Click, click on the side of the bar. Okay. All right. You see that keyboard that just popped up? Yeah. You can type in where you want to go. Like a Please like a me. typewriter on on your, on your phone. Oh well, yes, it's on Kaido now. <laughs> All right, you got that? Yeah. You good? Yeah. How long are you gonna be out? Oh, I don't know. Probably. Yeah, I just uh, you see that suck, man. You know what you know what to do. You can, you got a friend's house you can so, stay at. So, something wrong with your eye? No, I'm just. Same. Are you okay? <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Just, uh... Do you need me drug tested? Just, uh, don't... I'm just trying to make sure you're not walking in on me having sex. So, pardon? Just make sure you're not walking in on me having sex. With whom? With... <laughs> A girl. You're bringing someone here? What do you think Netflix and chill means? You said you're going to relax and watch TV, is what you Netflix said. Netflix and chill, yeah. What well, part of that means bring over a, a a woman? That's what Netflix and chill means. Sam, do not bring anyone over to my house. It's our house, technically. Sam, um, I'm in like kind of an incognito Yeah. Bit. You bring over random people. They're just my weird nerdy roommate. I I don't understand. Not gonna like drink her or anything. Thank goodness for that. I'd be a little bit worried if he did. No, like you. Right. I don't do that. No shit. Okay. So, I'm gonna put a sock on the door. Sock on the door means I'm like getting. Do not bring anyone over here, Sam. (laughs) Okay, Dad. Just relax. Watch your TV. What Get yourself fuck? a cheeseless pizza, you <laughs> heathen. I already got that covered. You want to see him go over to the refrigerator? He goes over to the um, freezer and he opens it up. He puts just crust on the counter. The fuck. See, I've been self uh, uh, efficient, so uh, I make my own dairy free pizza. So are you just lactose intolerant? Is that what it is? Yeah. Can't have cheese. If, why didn't you just say that? Yeah. I did say that. No. Yeah, I did. No, you just said, said that I can't have cheese. You said that you just were getting a cheeseless pizza. Yeah, I'm lactose intolerant. I mean, that's 
Nothing wrong with that. So my date and I are going to have some pizza and watch some Netflix. Oh, you're going out to see your date and not come bringing her back here? Is no, that what you're doing? she's coming here. No. <laughs> Sam, if I come back here and there's a woman here, she's dying. <laughs> and it's your fault. <laughs> Can I get oh an intimidation God. for you? That went from <laughs> zero to a hundred so fast. Double fisted. <laughs> I'm her win. Uh, manipulation and intimidation. Oh my God. Just go to Elysium. <laughs> what the fuck is girlfriend? Just go to Elysium. Better not. I'm going to. You better not. I'm going to. Two. Two. Okay, as you try to intimidate Sam. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Um, you know what, man? It's fine. I won't Netflix and chill. I won't Netflix and chill. Better not. No, I, no we, we will, I will not watch Netflix. No woman's coming over here, right? No one's. You're not bringing anyone here. I, uh, I will not bring the women's into this, into this home. Thank you. Completely honest. Good. I'm glad we could have this talk. Sam. This is Doctor Guy Walker. <laughs> I'm glad we could have this this talk and see eye to eye. I, I do. Yeah, I think that think this is really, really gonna work out. Yeah. Yeah, man. I think so too. All right, Sam. You have a good night. All right, you too, man. All right. And I'm, I assume my Uber's here by now. Okay. Right, as your Uber pulls up and. Uh, where you want to go? Elysium. Elysium? So you're just going to go straight to red number five? Okay. All right. You head the red number five, and as you do, uh, we're going to change scenes. Marilyn. You wake within Alcott Oddities. You hear that familiar sound of the uh, cash war. <laughs> That cash for opening and closing. Money now. <laughs> what would you like to do? All right, <clears throat> I'm hop out of bed. Okay. Now I'm gonna move my bed off the side a little right. bit. I'm gonna get in the floorboards where I'm keeping all my money. Okay. I'm gonna take out a wad. A wad. I'm gonna shove my pocket. <laughs> Just a ball of money. Just a wad. Just a big wad of money. I'm gonna shove it in my pocket. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna get ready. Get all, get all ready and head downstairs. Head downstairs. Okay. So you head downstairs. Uh, you already notice uh, Frederick out sweeping the sh um, shop floor. Um, you see uh, Revel in his little bed, just kind of watching Frederick in the corner. I see Amelia um, preparing the drawer for the night. Hi, Amelia. Hi. Um, is is everything okay with Dietrich? What do you What do you mean? I left in a hurry. When? Just a couple moments ago. He, he didn't say anything? He just mm, left? No, he's just seeing he's in a rush. Did he, did he look panicked or something? Oh, he just he didn't seem his composed self. I'm gonna look out the window. Do I see him anywhere? Nope. Did he take a cab or what? He took some sort of vehicle. God damn it. All right. Um... I'm assuming, you know, it has something to do with all his new friends he's been hanging with. Probably late. Probably late to meeting one of them or something. Is he, is he seeing somebody right now, or...? Probably. Hmm. Well, good, good for him. Good for him, yeah. Great. Wonderful. Are you... you know, you keep an eye on that, okay? You let me know if he's bringing anybody over here. Okay. I want names. Uh... I don't... 
I don't know if I should be that intrusive with my employer, or... I'm also your employer. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, Amelia. I'm going to try to pocket and pull out the, pull out the money. <laughs> oh my gosh, where'd you get all that... D- I have another job. And I've been you saving. You shouldn't keep that much money on you. That's fine, everything's fine here. You know what, I'm going to pull out like 200s. Okay. Alright. You just keep your ear to the ground. You let me know what's going on around here, all right? She's Marilyn Pacino over here. Puts her hand over it and it just, like, takes it. Uh, okay. Okay. You didn't get this from me. <laughs> right. Um. Good. All right. So do you want me to just tell you if he brings somebody over? I want to know everything. If I'm not around here, I want to know what's going on. Is I... What is your relationship with... Diedrich anyway. I don't know anymore. Things used to be so simple. Here's another hundred. Can you go ahead and just feed Francis and Rebel for me? I gotta go. Isn't he a grown... grown man? Like, I... Yeah, but he likes he likes it when you get his happy meals for him. So just, 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 you can, you know, Uber eat it. Uber eat. Uber eats it. You can do that. You have it delivered here. Go pick it up for him. Just two happy meals for Francis. And then you can get Rebel some chicken nuggets. <laughs> I, I don't think you should feed a puppy chicken nuggets. I, it's been fine so far. That's what I've been doing. It's a lot of processed meats and <laughs> He's flour. Fine. He's fine. Everything's fine. All right. Just remember what I said. Top secret. All right. Okay. Uh, so you want me to spy on Diedrich? Shh, keep your voice down. And feed both Francis. Francis and Rebel. Rebel. McDonald's. McDonald's. Two happy meals for Francis, chicken nuggets for Rebel. You got that? How many chicken nuggets would you like me to I don't know. I usually give him like a 12 pack. It's a lot of chicken nuggets for a puppy. (laughs) Marilyn, I don't know if you realize this. All right. All right. I don't have time for this. All right. I'll I'll be right back. I'm going to go up to Deidre's room. You have the teacher's room? Yes. Sometimes <laughs> Marilyn says, I don't have time. <laughs> Alright, so you got the Diedrich's room? <laughs> what would you like to do in Diedrich's room? I'm gonna start snooping around. Start snooping around? <laughs> okay, give me an intelligence and investigation. snooping around. Uh, you don't find anything out of the ordinary. Uh, it's about the same though the last time you searched around his room. You come to the um, dresser drawer next to his bed and you pull it out and you pull out the rings. Um, <laughs> you look it over, kind of shake them. It looks like there is less rings in here than there were beforehand. No, all right, all right, all right. No, I'm taking one. You're gonna take one? That's mine. Okay. Oh, he just made notes. a note. Well, he I'm just fucked. made a fucking note. <laughs> <laughs> just commit now. <laughs> We're going hard. I have to take all of them. <laughs> Put them on all your fingers. <laughs> just show up. <laughs> I'm like, hey, what's going on? How's it? What have you been up to? Where have you been? No, I'm just taking one. Just okay. one. <laughs> you may be a night of the moon, but I'm a super night. <laughs> So you take the, take a ring. Yeah, I'm taking a ring. All right. I'm putting it on. Okay. Come on now. All right. Mm-hmm. There's something else here. I know there is, but I don't have time. I have to come back. Okay. I'm gonna go head back downstairs. Okay. As you head downstairs, uh, you notice headlights begin to pull up in front of Alcott Oddities. You see a um, familiar vehicle pull up. I'll head outside. Okay. As you head outside. Alistair, Memphis, as you pull up the Alcott out of these, you see Marilyn standing out on the front doorstep. I'm gonna roll down my window and be like, Get in, bitch, it's time to go. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get out. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get out of the car. Okay. Uh, Marilyn? Huh? Is this real? You're not dreaming. Oh. What up? Oh. Back from the dead! Ah! 
Is Memphis in your car? Yes, we, we found Memphis. Yeah. Um, is, is Erwin with you? Where have you been? Japan. Yeah, Japan. Japan. Yeah. How long? Uh... It's taken us some time to get back to, uh, how to the state. How long? I don't know how long he was there, but yeah. I'm How long have you had him? Three months. Why did you not tell us? Well, not three months, but um, about 20, 20 days. I've been spending so many nights down in Dietrich study trying to find ways to get back there or to find you or something. I tried messaging you, but your phone didn't. You never responded. Yeah, you could have just Google Maps that. I may or may not have lost my phone. In a sewer. Kaido, can you... Kaido's not there. Oh, Kaido's... Oh, that's right. Kaido's not there. All right, I'll just, uh... We'll get with Kaido and get you a new phone. All right. Um, why don't you, uh, get in and I'll take us to Elysium tonight. Are you sure this is real? Yes, I'm very sure. Yeah, apparently it's real. Also, is Diedrich here? I feel no. like... No. Oh. Why? What? Why? How is Delphi? Um... I don't know. I barely see him anymore. Well, um, has he not told you then? Told me what? About, uh... I'm gonna start looking at his hands. Do you have gloves on? Yes. Take your gloves off. Why? Why? Take your gloves off. This is is the ring that... Alright, yeah, you're good. That hand's good. That hand's good. Other one. Let's see it. Come on. Why are you being weird? Shh. This is important. Okay. As uh, you take off both gloves on Alistair's right hand, you notice that there is a red crescent moon tattoo on it. When did you get that? When we were in LA. You son of a bitch. You said we didn't have time to go anywhere else. I did, I, no. He's giving out tattoos now too, huh? Was it from that Tremere? Wait, yes. <laughs> Wait, who's giving out tattoos? It was you last night, wasn't it? <laughs> what did you do? What did I, wait, what? what? It was me last night doing what? The teacher came back and he, he had a couple like slashes on his arms and he was carrying a sword with him and said he was busy doing sword play. So it was you last night, wasn't it? No, I haven't seen Diedrich in months. You're one of them, aren't you? One of who? One of what? Mm. What? Do what? I need to? Marilyn, what? What does this look like to you? Do you have one of these? Is it a ring? It's a blank silver ring. There's nothing around it. Hmm? Hmm? I, you got married? Well, yeah, a while ago, but this isn't that. I don't have a... I don't... I mean, besides for the ring that Gloria, my, my foster sire gave me. No, I don't What's ha- that? This is, um... Mm-hmm. I'll be honest with all of you. You're a knight of the moon, aren't you? No. You son of a bitch. You're a knight? I am now officially a Alistair for the Camarilla. This is a mark of trophy. Do I know what that is? It's going to be an intelligence and street wise role. Actually, intelligence and street wise or intelligence and politics? Whatever's the highest goal for you. For both of us? Yeah. I even get to do this? Yes. <laughs> you did pass class. One. Just one. <clears throat> Two. Two. And a best deal. Okay. So, two of you begin to try to mull it over. Uh, you can kind of think uh, of the name Alistair comes to mind, but you think just like during the Ventru portion of the class, you were just talking about actually Alistair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just assume all Ventrus are Alistair. So what does that mean? <clears throat> it's, a, it's a position. Um, it means that I report directly to the inner circle, and I oh. am... I'm a, 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 technically above Kevin, as far as... Wait, you're Kevin's boss? I could be, if oh. I was to enforce it. Oh my god. Alright, alright, more importantly, what do you want with Deidre? Make him stop dating my mom. Get back to that. Um, I wanted to speak with Diedrich about what he wanted me to do with you. Which was? Um, in fact, I actually wanted to speak with Erwin about it, too. Uh, he said something about um, you needing to get your um, the 
take more charge with your responsibilities. Um, I remember back in the Quad Cities that you basically, I did hire you on as an assistant, and we really haven't done anything with that. So I was going to uh, kind of crack down on that, and Diedrich wanted you to start um, working. Since you already had a job through me, um, I essentially was going to give you a position. There you go, you can start making some money. I, I will pay. Yeah, it's not, it's not Well, free I hate money. to break it to you, but I already have money, alright? I don't need a job. You just have a bowl of cash? Yeah, one of many, alright? I don't need you, I don't need your job, do I don't need DJ to tell me what to do. No, I don't, I'm not used to have Did money. Did you rob somebody? I don't, right. I don't need Deidre to tell me what to it's do. It's not about the money. It's about the structure of it. Uh, Deidre is saying that you need to be more... <coughs> structured. Structured? Oh, yeah? Well, Why'd I know you... someone who thinks that I don't need to be more structured. I know somebody who thinks that I'm already pretty cool. So... Is, is it us? It's me. It's definitely not either of you. You're, you wish to be this cool. Oh, all right. Um... <laughs> Well, no, no, I'm, I'm with Wait, you. Wait, do you it. not want to work for me? Diedrich made it sound like you did. No, destroy if you don't, the structure. If, if you don't want to work for me, then then no. Walk around. Is it pretty empty out here? I don't think it's really Diedrich, Alistair. <gasps> I think Diedrich's trying to get rid of me. Diedrich's trying to get rid of me. He wants me out of the way. So the black can... eyes. Yeah. Okay. We should kill Diedrich. We are <gasps> doing no such thing. Put your sword away. Don't you ever joke about that. We will investigate Sorry. this then, Marilyn. We, if Diedrich is an imposter, which there's a potential that Abraham is also not Abraham. I had to stop in LA to get this mark. I spoke with the regent. He explained to me that the letters he's been receiving from Abraham is not his handwriting. He's been acting odd. I... Abraham had the black eyes too. I have a lot of stuff to talk to you about. Let's get to, um... Kaido had the black eyes. Let's get to it. Wait, what? Kaido had the black eyes on me. That's, that's from, that's from a, that's from his discipline. Uh, I don't think so. Three people, three imposters. <laughs> Kaido's an imposter. Oh, all right, all right, all right, hold on. I'm gonna run back and poke my hand in the shop. Amelia, I'll be back. Okay. Don't forget to feed Francis and, and Rebel, all right? I already have their happy meals coming. All right. Thank you. You're the best. Bye. 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 Is, you know, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, open the door. If you want to ride. Do you? I'm going to walk to the other side of the car and open my own door. All right. I close the door. And then I get back in the driver's seat. Okay. And you're in shotgun? Yeah, I'm in okay. shotgun. And then I'm going to start driving towards Elysium. Okay. As you start heading towards Elysium, I'll no, be catching up with. You're always the number two man. I try to be. I try to just go with the flow. I've gone with the wind. And then on the way there. Um, so, if Diedrich is not who he says he is, who would he be? I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, have, Felix said he has something to do with Capula. <clears throat> Capula. Hmm. So Capula's alive. Well, yeah. Morgan's alive. Which, by the way, I found my grandsire in the basement. Oh, top hat guy. Your and I've been talking to him. Grandsire? Felix. You should ask him if I can have a hat. You can't have his hat. What's You're his not a ringmaster. Ring? Felix who? What's his last name? The fuck's a ringmaster? Is that where you got the ring? I don't know if he told me his last name. I don't remember. Is it the, did, is it the same Felix that owned a carnival or a, a fair or yeah. something? Yeah. He said he knew you. I think Lorienko and I had met him once or twice, but um, I don't know too much about him. Very eccentric. Very intelligent, from what I gathered. So, did you uncork him? I, well, I was I was kind of waiting to make a group decision when you came back to mm. decide on that, because it's kind of I mean, it's like a too good to be true type of situation. But maybe I'm just overthinking it. Mm. Let's treat tonight like a reconnaissance mission. Then 
We go to Elysium, we lay low, we pretend that we don't know anything, and we're just glad to have Memphis back. But let's gather information if we can. Got you. Let's stay low key. Mm-hmm. Undercover. Pumpernickel. Pumpernickel? Pumpernickel is our code word for you're undercover and you can't express Ugh. information. I loved Pumpernickel. I, I did, never had it, but I'm, I'm not a big fan of pumpkin flavored things at all, so. That's, that's not, well, that's not. I don't not, think it's, it's pumpkin, pumpkin at all. But here, alright, so we'll do that, and Diedrich should be there, so I'll be watching him like a hawk. Alright, well, maybe. Maybe we could, um. Yes. So. Well, you think I can't do it? No, no, you absolutely could do it. I'm just saying that maybe we should, um. Maybe we should split up and not have you with Diedrich, since Diedrich will be keeping an eye on you. No, he won't. He won't? I thought Diedrich was uh, all um, obsessed about you. No. He's not. He's trying to make me get a job, Alistair. Mm. All right. That'd be the worst. So you don't want the job, then? I don't know. I'll think about it. Because I'm going to tell you this right now. Um, I'm only a few weeks away. Actually, what's the date? Uh, today is July 15th. Oh, it's next week, actually. I have this big corporate party um, uh, that I'm throwing. Uh, it's for the whole entire um, uh, company. It's a great time. All the kind, they come. A lot of them get drunk on my boat. Um, mm. Party it up. Sounds fun. That sounds terrible. You ever been out on the, on, on the, the lake? No. It's, it's actually quite quite enjoyable out there on the night, calm. It's not like the ocean where you just have rough, rough, you know, sea. It's just... Plus with me running the music, leading the party. Oh, would you like to run the music on the... Yeah, I don't think of you course. should have Memphis on a boat full of kind. I'm just going to throw it out there. Oh, why? Well, I'll be there, and this is my company. I would have to, you know... Obviously, we're not going to have any shenanigans going on. Right. No, no. No shenanigans. That was so old Memphis. I'm new Memphis. Oh, wow, what yeah. happened to you? You know, a lot happened. How'd you end up in Japan? I have so many questions for you. <clears throat> We're just glad to have him back. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad to be back. All right. So. Chicago. So two invitations then to the company party? Yeah. Where is where's our Donatello, though? Who? Our Donatello. The artist? No, the turtle. The doctor. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm... I'm lost. I imagine it'll be Elysium. He should be. Hopefully he's wearing real clothes, though, this time. Oh, Irwin. Yeah. Is Ir- Donatello a nickname for Irwin now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because you're Raphael, uh, you're Michelangelo, and I'm Leonardo. I've never seen it. I would like to, though. So you head towards thread number five? Mm-hmm. Okay. Early. You read right there, read number five. It's a uh, semi busy night. Uh, looks like it's uh, they're starting to turn away customers as they're um, stopping in front of the door. Uh, so you walk up, the balancer stops you. Uh, but I am, um, I am not letting you in. <laughs> Why not? You're in a bathrobe. Oh? Have you had a little too much tonight? No. I'm here for a special meeting. Right, 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 right. Um, look, buddy, I don't, I don't know what you're on right now, but uh, I can't let you in. I think you can and you will. I'm not going to. Why? Just because of how I look. Yeah. You're still me. I'm expected to come here. I got an invitation. It's a club, but you don't get invited to clubs. I did. <laughs> okay, buddy. I'm, I don't want to call the cops on Maybe you can get your boss. <laughs> Who is your boss? Ads? Yeah, why don't you get ads? Right. 
right. I'll win. Okay. As you wait outside, uh, he's just kind of letting people in um, as you're just standing there. Codery, uh, eventually you pull out, pull out front uh, the red number five. Uh, the first thing you see is an individual in a bathrobe waiting in front of uh, the red number five. Oh, oh there, there he is. There's Erwin. He wore I'm the bathroom. Roll down the window. Hey, bitch, get in. You hear someone ye- uh, yell at you. Turn around and you see uh, Memphis s- s- hanging out the window. <laughs> Doc, did you forget me? It's Memphis. Oh, it's Johnny. I'm going to park the car. I'm gonna hop oh. out. Oh, I'll go up to Irwin. Irwin, Irwin, do you see? Who, do you see who Alistair brought back? I'm gonna walk up too. Er, er, Doc, what's up? Give me a hug. Memphis. Long time no see. I'm gonna go in for a hug. Ah. Oh. I give him the look at, hug look, back. Look at you. <laughs> um, what what are you wearing? What is this? Uh, comfortable, com- comfy clothes. See, everything's comfy okay clothes. now. You can dress normal again. You didn't kill him. You uh, thought you killed me? What happened to you? Well, I remember we came up with an amazing idea, and you threw me. We did the uh, Memphis Piper Javelin. Right. And then everything went black, woke up in Tokyo, and took my rightful place as best ping pong player there. Is that, is that true? Was he the best ping pong player there? I now? was. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my way up here. I threw, I threw you so hard you landed in Tokyo. Maybe. Um, he was, um, we found him in Japan uh, cheating at ping pong. Using, I wasn't cheating. You were using disciplines to, uh, to be yeah. kind in, in ping pong matches. He was just taking advantage of the opportunity. Yeah, Alistair. it's called using skill. You should know skill. all about that. Hear the wine uh, holler of uh, Kaido's Hayabusa pull up to the club. And see him get off the bike and set the helmet down. He makes eye contact with a lot of you and starts walking over. Hey, all right, we're all here. Yeah. Did you know about this too? Oh, him? Yeah. Yeah, he was kind of surprised. Uh, Actually, I wanted to talk to him. I was thinking maybe um, since I mean I figure this is all for me anyway. Maybe the prince doesn't know, but um, if you could sneak me in the back, also control the music to saying that Backstreet Boys, oh my god, he's back again. I can walk out like a wrestler. Are you trying to hijack the whole Elysium event? Just, just, yeah, I bet. Just walk inside like a normal yeah, person. Yeah, I think just do, do it normally. Especially since a lot of people have been looking for you. I think, I think Bennett would be really pissed off if I just started blaring Backstreet Boys. Oh no, Ben and me go way back. You've only been a kindred for a year. Yeah, but it was a busy year. <clears throat> Memphis, why don't, we, why don't we do the Backstreet Boys another night? Alright. We'll, we'll just, just go in normal this time. You are right. right? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of Irwin? shocked. He's been a hot mess since you've been gone. I'm going to need to speak with you in private. Oh, okay. What's this about now? It's about his future with Clan Tremere. Oh, all right, that's fine. <gasps> oh, are you changing? Are you adopting him too? No. Are we going to be brothers? No, I'm, I'm, I'm released. He's released. You cannot adopt someone who's already released. Can you release someone who's already adopted? What? What? <laughs> Coterie. Uh, so you're walking towards the entrance? Yeah. Okay. As you walk towards the entrance, uh, kind of get a wits and awareness from everybody. Um, I just need a straightforward test of two. Success. I get that. Okay. What the fuck? I don't. Don't? Two. Two? Okay. So the three of you notice a uh, limousine begins to pull up next to red number five. Uh, particularly you, Alistair. Uh, you notice the vehicle is heading towards you as it uh, pulls up and it stops. And 
as you turn around and you notice this vehicle, you see that the, the window begins to lower. And as it does, uh, you see a female individual. She has olive skin, uh, green eyes, it's curly uh, black hair. Uh, you notice that around her neck is a very um, ornate uh, necklace. It's uh, gold, looks uh, almost Egyptian, maybe Babylonian. Uh, you see us as limousine pulls up and the window lowers. Excuse me. Yes? Are you uh, Alistair Grayson by chance? That's I. It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, my employer. She kind of smiles and smirks as she says that. Pulls out a card from her pocket. You know, she's uh, dressed in a uh, fine blazer. She hands you a card. <clears throat> My employer, Archer Roth, would like to speak with you sometime. You are Alpha Grayson, correct, of Terra Technologies? That's correct. So you stare at the card, and you notice at the very front, it says Pentex. All black, uh, silver uh, writing. As you flip it over, you notice... Uh, has the contact information to uh, an Arth Archer Roth. Uh, my employer would love to speak with you uh, if you have time tonight. I can make some time to speak with Mr. Roth. Mm, fantastic. Uh, are you familiar with the old uh, Pink Lotus building? Very familiar. Mm. Well, uh, we've set up a shop there. He looks forward to speaking with you, Alistair. As do I. Thank you. Mm. So the window rolls up and drives away. Who is that? Another problem. She looked like a hot problem, though. That little yacht vacation is getting further and further away. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, as we're... Getting ready to move in. I won't go into great length of detail on this, but I will all tell you this, that Pentex is trouble. Huh? What about Pentex? It's trouble. Why, why, why are we talking about Pentex? What happened? That is who Mr. Roth works for. Do you know Pentex? I don't know what's happening. Do you, say, do you talk like you have history of Pentex? No, I'm just repeating what I'm hearing. I, I just came to the conversation. I was not paying attention. Oh. I get that. Yeah. It's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm really preoccupied right now. Let's head into Elysium and begin the night. All right. Okay. As the uh, Coterie heads towards the entrance, the uh, sponsor stops you all again. Hey, look, I don't know how you got these people in the room. Oh, shit. Hey, guy! God damn it. You know him? Yeah, I know him. Just just go in. Just just don't talk. Yeah. Just Everyone, oh, come on. Oh, you made friends around here. That's I good. make friends everywhere. As a coterie piles into red number five for Elysium, that is when I call the episode for tonight. Nice. Mm. All right. So, Some tea tonight. Lots of tea. All together Six. again. So... Uh, hopefully you all enjoy the story tonight. Uh, again, uh, sorry we couldn't do this live for you all, but um, looking forward to doing that 12 hour, 24 hour stream to celebrate our thousand subscriber mark. Um, and this is just one benchmark in um, several more to come. I'm very excited to help grow this community. I'm definitely uh, very proud of all the work we've done and um, uh, very happy and to be a part of this. So. Uh, thank you all for your support and your love. Uh, definitely means a whole lot to us. Um, do we have any last minute announcements before I close out for us tonight? Carl? Um, yeah, Mars is in retrograde, so keep that in mind as we're going out there. All right. <laughs> okay. So if we don't get any more uh, we don't. I think, I think, I think we're, we're going to dip out here. Yeah. Uh, we're working, dude. The best time to tell stories. This one over here. It's near dark. Bye-bye. Fucking said it.